Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thanks for attending this planning committee, Thursday, 29th of July. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Councillor Caleb Tomlinson and I chair the committee. And my vice chair is Councillor Mal Donoghue. This meeting has been recorded and the stream will also be live on YouTube. The web address for this is displayed on the agenda for the meeting. If you're attending the meeting because you're a member of the public who wishes to speak, please note you have a time limit of four minutes. You will be timed and I will confirm when four minutes runs out. You should then finish. I'm aware that several applications on the agenda have garnered a lot of public interest. Please be aware that our constitution only permits up to five supporters and five objectors. After each report has been presented and any speakers have made their representations, I will bring the application into committee. If any committee members wish to speak on an application, you should so indicate and I will bring you in in order. Voting will be undertaken by roll call and I will read out your names alphabetically to vote on each item. The outcome of the vote will be confirmed by our legal services team leader, Alex Jackson. Due to the regulation surrounding voting, only those members present will be able to vote. I'll begin with some housekeeping. If you've got mobile phones with you, could you put them onto mute, please? And to, spread the re to reduce the spread of COVID-19, all tables and chairs have been placed within two metres of one another. Please do not move any tables or chairs during the meeting. Whenever you leave or enter the room, you must wear a mask. You may have noticed that the doors are currently open to ensure airflow and ventilation, so you may wish to leave your jackets on. If you brought your own cup or bottle to drink from, please feel free to fill this up at any point during the meeting. Hand sanitizers and cleaning sprays are located around the room for you to use if you so wish. We're not, we are not anticipating a fire alarm drill, but if the alarm does go off, you should leave via the fire exit in the cross and wheel rooms and wait on the grassy area on West Paddock. At the end of the meeting, I will ask you to leave in individual groups to avoid crowding. If I can now in ask everyone to introduce themselves, starting with, this is committee members, starting with Councillor Adams. Well, this is Councillor Will Adams. <laughs> Councillor Watson. This is Councillor Watson, Councillor Donoghue. I've asked, did we have any IT problems? Mine's good. Mine's good. Oh, okay. okay. Hello, I'm Councillor Maldon, you and I represent Seven Stars. Uh... <laughs> we'll start again, I think. Councillor Adams. There we go. Good evening. I'm Councillor Will Adams, and I represent Middleforth in Pemberton. Good evening. I'm Councillor Gareth Watson, and I represent Cap Green and Gregson Lane. Good evening. Once again, I'm Councillor Maldon, you and I represent Seven Stars Ward. Good evening. Uh, Councillor Phil Smith, representing New Longton and Hutton East. Good evening, Councillor Caroline Moon, and I represent Buckshaw and Worden. Uh, Councillor James Flannery, representing Middlefirth, Bembertham. Good evening, Councillor Mary Green, Councillor for Mosside and Midjong. Good evening, Councillor Harry Hancock, I represent Broad Oak Ward, Bembertham. Good evening, Councillor Barry Yates, I represent Salisbury and Waltons. Good evening, Chris Lomax, Watley Dale East. Good evening, Jonathan Hesketh, I represent Longton and Hutton West. And our officers, starting with Alex Jackson. <clears throat> Good evening, Alex Jackson, Legal Services Team Leader. Good evening, I'm Stephen Brown, Head of Development Management. Good evening, Catherine Lewis, one of the Planning Officers. Good evening, Debbie Roberts, Planning Officer. Good evening, Chris Sowerby, Planning Officer. Good evening, Janice Crook, Planning Officer. Ruth Remington, Democratic Services. OK, um, moving on to apologies for absence. We have an apology from Councillor Christine Melia. 
Do we have any other apologies? No, Chair. Do we have any declarations of interest? Councillor Yates. Right, thank you, Chair. Um, I've got a non prejudicial interest on item number eight. Um, as a Lancashire County Council, I put a petition in for, the, for some street lighting on the public footpath that's part of this uh, application. Um, it's good it's going through, but it's not much prejudicial. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, Councillor Yates. Yeah, Councillor Hesketh. Thank you, Mr Chairman. The last item on the agenda, Tower View Farm. I have a, a, a relationship with the owner. Perhaps I've I, I'm not put that correct. <laughs> Will you be leaving the meeting, Councillor Hesketh? I'll put it this way, it's my nephew. <laughs> so you will be leaving the meeting for that item? Yes? Yes, OK. Right, I've read and agree with the minutes of the meeting held on the 8th of July. Could I have a seconder, Councillor Smith? Yeah, I'll okay. second those, Chair. OK, can we go to the vote on those, though? Then, Councillor Adams? For. Councillor Donoghue? Yeah, for, Chair. Councillor Flannery? For. Councillor Mary Green. For Chair. Councillor Harry Hancock. For Chair. Councillor John Hesketh. Oh no, sorry about that, you weren't, were you? Councillor Chris Lomax. For. Councillor Caroline Moon. For. Councillor Phil Smith. For. Councillor Gareth Watson. For Chair. And Councillor Barry Yates. And I am also for them. Alex, will you confirm the outcome of the vote, please? Thank you, Chair. Members have voted to approve the minutes of the last meeting held on the 8th of July. Thank you very much for that. All right, item number five on tonight's agenda, appeal decisions. Uh, Stephen Brown, please. Yes, Chair, thanks. We have three appeals to report tonight. The first related to 348 Station Road, which was for a change of use from a B1 printers to a three-bed apartment. The main issue was the effect of the development on the living conditions of occupiers of existing properties with particular regard to overlooking and privacy. The inspector concluded that as the separation distances already found in the locality were below those set out in the council's design guidance, then he was prepared to accept these lesser standards in this case and allowed the peel subject to two of the first floor windows being obscurely glazed. The second relates to 367 Brindle Road, which was an application that came before this committee, which was for a change of use of part of domestic land and direction of a workshop building. It was uh, a building that was some 12 metres long, 7.5 metres wide and 4 metres tall, and a fenced off area of the garden where the building is sited, clad in metal. It's used for commercial purposes for the production of circuit boards. In association with the appeal, the appellants offered to clad the building in timber, which the inspector took into account. However, the inspector concluded that by virtue of noise, disturbance and visual intrusion, the development is harmful to the living conditions of neighbouring residential occupiers and he dis dismissed the appeal. As this was a retrospective case, they now left themselves open to enforcement action. And the final one relates to one Hugh Lane Leyland, which was a first floor side extension, conversion of a garage and a front bay with a further detached garage to the front, which was refused by ourselves. The inspector concluded that the proposal would significantly harm the living conditions of the occupiers of adjacent property through loss of light. Secondly, he concluded there was insufficient off-road parking. So again, this appeal was dismissed. Thanks, Chair. Thanks very much for that, Stephen. So some good news and some bad. OK, we'll move on to item number six this evening. Windmill Hotel, Preston New Road, Mellorbrook. Um, Catherine Lewis, please. eight miles north of Leyland. It's at the junction of Preston Road, Preston New Road and Branch Road. So this is the proper to hear the application site. Um, it's a former public house known as the Windmill, which ceased trading in 2014. And it's in a prominent location, a corner location. To the north and west boundaries, there are adjoining residential properties with Branch Road on the eastern boundary and residential properties further to the there. And then the A677 to the south. And there's an existing garage um, petrol filling station that's due west. 
The next slide uh, just demonstrates there's about two or three that just provide the context for the um, application site. So this is um, Mellibrook uh, Salmsbury, and this is the Wimmel Hotel that's currently uh, within the site area. As you can see, this is Preston New Road and it's 30 miles an hour, and Branch Road again, 30 miles an hour with a weight restriction of 7.5. Again, this is a picture here of, from Branch Road looking at the building. So it's obviously a lot of worse for wear and residents have expressed concerns in the past with rats to the building, antisocial behaviour and inappropriate filming within the building taking place. The next slide again is uh, from Branch Road, just looking up Branch Road to the residential properties. This is this elevation here, the existing building, the proposed accesses will be along here and this is the first adjacent property. This is a uh, photograph that was taken a number of years ago, but it, currently the site is overgrown and this at least gives you the best opportunity to see um, the relationship of number 15 Branch Road, which adjoins the site. There's a long history involved with the site. Um, in 2016, we had the first application and that was withdrawn. So the applicant could um, look at the issues that were raised by Lancs County Council Highways and to work on the access points that they raised. In 2017, uh, we received an application that addressed the highways and demonstrated a building to the north of the site with the petrol filling station in the corner. Access would be taken from here and there was one new access exit point at this point here. As part of this previous application, we had kind of a um, red brick building, concrete tiles that was kind of quite elongated and that sat at the back of the site. And this was refused by the planning committee for two reasons. It would adversely affect the character and visual amenity of the area, increase disturbance and detriment on highway amenities through the activity in the site, and also the utilitarian and design fabric and grain of the established settlement would be adversely affected. And the appeal, the applicants went to appeal and that was dismissed. And the inspector said that it would have an unacceptable and adverse effect on the character and appearance of the area, that the design was formulaic, basic and uninteresting. And they also expressed concern about the increased activity, noise and traffic from the petrol filling station and the store that would materially affect the sound environment by residents to their detriment. The applicant has again submitted a planning application um, for a revised layout. And this incorporates the uh, petrol filling station within the middle of the site. We've got the location of the uh, building at the corner to try and address the concerns raised by the residents, uh, sorry, by the, uh, well, by the residents and also by the um, inspector in terms of the impact within, within the village within the street scene and the character and appearance. There will be an existing access that will be opened up for access only and two further points over here. One that would be allowed in here, but there will be no exit from the site. And here will be the exit points. And this is the corner of Branch Road and Preston New Road. There will be an acoustic fence located here to address some of the concerns raised about noise and the impact on amenity. And there would also be car parking that was situated just by that, which is currently existing as in the public house. There'll be car parking and including mobility spaces and cycleways here and the mobility spaces in front of the building. And the building would be pulled back from Branch Road to provide the opportunity for more landscaping on that elevation. This slide demonstrates the massing of the existing public house, which is in purple, against the backdrop of the proposed building. And the applicant has provided this information to try and address the concerns about the design of the building. And again, this is the current elevations. So initially, the building, when it was first submitted as part of this second application, consisted of timber cladding and render with the slate roof. But now it's mostly stone. So we've got stone frontages to um, Preston New Road with architectural placed windows to break up that elevation 
We've gone for a more, they've gone for a more simplistic design, simple palette of materials with more stone, and then this acoustic fencing to be render, sorry, the acoustic fencing to be timber with a render element to, to this part of the side. And then this is the view taken as you look from the car park. So lots of glazing with a canopy and then a single story element here. And then this is taken slightly from Preston New Road and also from Branch Road. So they've broken up the elevation uh, to try and address that concerns about it being on an important location uh, within that corner area. The next slide demonstrates the canopy. Uh, concerns have been raised about uh, the impact of the petrol filling station and the applicant has chosen to submit for three um, pump areas that will provide for six in total and it would have a simple design with a natural slate roof and simple stanchions that are coming down. And this is a visual and artist impression taken from Preston New Road with the entrance into the site, the simple canopy and then the building here, which you can see appears to sit more comfortably within the site area and within the uh, surrounding context of the village as opposed to the back of the site over here, which was one of the problems with the previous application. The application has generated huge local opposition for the development and it's understandably the site has been derelict and has already been to appeal. However, there are no objections from any statutory consultees. The highways uh, have said that they've no objections subject to the imposition of conditions, although there's been uh, an awful lot of um, concern raised by residents about the access, potential accidents and the impact of the HGBs arriving into the site. Concern has also been raised about a gas pipe. Um, we've consulted the health and safety executive and their standing advice is that they raise no objection to that. Um, the fire officer is not a statutory consultee, but we have consulted them uh, in response to the concerns that, neighbors have been re that the neighbours have raised. But we haven't received any formal comments to object to that based on their concerns. Again, we've consulted Cadent Gas, the plant protection team. Initially, they advised we had to wait for the submission of their detailed report. And that when, when it arrived, raised no planning objection. Yes, there are technical details about the construction of the site, but they could form an informative on any decision notice. Uh, annually, as a local authority, we have visits from the safety officer from Cadent Gas to talk about uh, new pipelines and what's happening in the future. Uh, we consulted him following his uh, visit and he sought uh, uh, advice and raised no objection. We then went back to him with the concerns from the residents he advised to contact the plant protection team, which is the same team that provided the initial response to raise no concerns. Design was one of the reasons for uh, refusal. The applicant has revised the location so it sits within the footprint of the existing public house and also the massing is not much greater than the existing public house. It's a corner site notoriously difficult to design and officers had reservations about the large amounts of timber cladding and render that initially came in with this new application. Um, the opportunity for the stone and slate to most of the elevations, which provides a simple palette of materials, is supported by officers. The site's not in a conservation area or an area of higher environmental design, for instance, an area of outstanding natural beauty, and therefore it's considered that this design and use of materials overcomes the concerns raised by the inspector. And then the main concern, I think, is from the noise and the impact on amenity across the site. The Environmental Health Officer has been consulted on a number of times about this aspect, um, but has raised no concerns as set out in the report. There are a number of changes to the building and the canopy in terms of its location and also a change in the hours of um, opening. So initially the applicant uh, applied for six o'clock in the morning till 2300, 11 p.m. at night. And that has been changed to seven o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock at night. So it's lost two hours during the day. And on that basis, officers consider 
that the impact on residential amenity in terms of that noise is such that on balance we should recommend approval for that aspect. It's acknowledged that the majority of the residents are against the development, but the fallback position is it's a historical use as a public house with no conditions to restrict the hours. And given how COVID has changed how public houses use their outdoor spaces, the current use and scheme does at some level provide greater protection for the residents. The application and the issues are finely balanced, but in reflecting on all the statutory consultee responses, the appeal decision notice which raised those two concerns, officers on balance are recommending approval subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks for your detailed report, Catherine. Um, I have five members of the public who are against this application who have registered to speak. Uh, do we have a Sheila Wright, please? If you'd like to come to the microphone, press the speak button once you've introduced yourself and I will start the stopwatch. Okay. Um, uh, I'm Sheila Wright. I'm a planning consultant representing the Salmsbury Residence Forum and Mellorbrook Matters. Um, good evening and thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. I'm sure many of you will be familiar with the phrase, a leopard can't change its spots. The leopard in question is a petrol filling station and convenience store. It was such in 2018 when it was refused on appeal and it remains so in the application before you tonight. Consistency of decision making is an important principle in planning. The inspector's decision is a key material consideration which cannot lightly be set aside. The applicants will seek to persuade you that the proposal before you is so different from the appeal scheme that the inspector's decision can be set aside. Well, that's not the case. The, oh, sorry, the development may have been shuffled around the site and some design changes made, but these are minimal and tokenistic window dressing. No amount of tinkering can address the fundamental unsuitability of this site for this type of development. The inspector said that the two main issues were the impact on the character and appearance of the area and the living conditions of nearby residents, with particular reference to noise and disturbance. These have not changed. In relation to character and appearance, Whilst the current proposals purport to provide an improved design, they cannot overcome the points made by the inspector about the inherent characteristics of a petrol filling station, including the canopy, being dominant and utilitarian with a scale and bulk which is out of character with the rural setting of this part of the village. In relation to impact on living conditions, the inspector decided that the amount of vehicle movements in and out of the site with associated activity from customers and noise from car doors slamming, car stereo music and the starting of vehicles throughout the day and into the night would create what she called social harm for residents. The applicant's own noise report specifically states that these matters are not capable of measurement. That means they are not capable of meaningful mitigation either. And that's, that's something your environmental health officer can't get involved in because of no means of measuring it. They are inescapable features of the daily operation of this kind of facility. The only mitigation offered is a very small reduction in opening hours although these would still be longer than the existing petrol station on Preston New Road. This would do absolutely nothing to mitigate noise and disturbance during the remaining opening hours. Furthermore, the hours could be extended again in the future through an application. Your officers have raised the spectre of a 24 hour eatery on the site as a fallback position. Case law has established that there has to be a reasonable prospect of something happening for it to be a fallback. The inspector um, gave very little weight to the prospect of the pub being brought back into use. 
My clients are not NIMBYs. They want to see something of positive benefit to the village happening on the site. This development is not it. The inspector decided that the appeal proposal would not be sustainable development. That conclusion also applies here. Because there is, in essence, no material difference between the appeal proposal and this one, you can be secure in refusing the application, knowing that you are backed up by your own national, uh, your own and national policies. Okay, that's um, four minutes. We urge you to do so. Can you, can you, can you, sign up? Thanks for your presentation, Sheila. Thank you very much. Um, do we have a Michael Kitchen? Members of the Planning Committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Michael Kitching, I'm a director with SK Transport Planning and I have over 25 years private and public sector transport planning experience. You've been made aware there's a significant level of concern regarding these development proposals on traffic, transport and highway safety matters. The first planning application in 2016 was withdrawn by the applicant following a robust objection from Lancashire County Council as Highway Authority on highway safety grounds. The Highway Authority's objection letter confirmed that the A677 is a strategic route with a 30 mile hour speed limit restriction. There were seven recorded personal injury accidents on the Preston New Road in the last five years, and they had concerns regarding the reopening of the entrance onto the A677 with the access potentially affecting highway safety. The vehicular access had been closed a number of years ago due to safety concerns. And at peak times, right turning traffic into the site from Preston New Road could queue onto the carriageway and impact onto the pedestrian crossing and nearby junction. And the point remains now that the Highway Authority has historically objected to reopening that vehicle access onto the 677, and there's been no material change in traffic conditions on the local highway network since then. Members of the Planning Committee may not be aware that residents of 13 Long Meadow, the residential property adjacent to the west of the application site, have previously requested the Highway Authority consider a new vehicular access onto the road. The same Highways Officer dealing with this planning application has stated in writing both before and after the first petrol station application, we would raise an objection to any new access point onto the A677 due to it being a strategic route with a recognised high rate of, of incidents. And as of this, this morning, the crash map website, which presents recorded collisions reported to the police, confirms there's been eight collisions in the last five years on the 350 metre section of the A677 adjacent to the proposed reopening access. Your planning officer has made you aware of the planning inspectorate's recent appeal decision, which dismissed the applicant's proposals for a very similar scheme on the site. In her decision, the inspector stated, the proposal will introduce a considerable amount of vehicle movements in and out of the development site with associated activity from customers and noise, from car door slamming, stereo, car stereo music, and the starting of vehicles. This will be throughout the day and into the night, with early morning and late night opening hours. Furthermore, given the size of the convenience store and associated parking spaces, it is likely there'll be additional trips associated with the use. The inspector went on to confirm that at the time of my site visit, both roads were busy with constant flows of vehicles, often queuing at Branch Road to exit. Whilst I recognise this was a peak times, trips to petrol filling stations are generally made on trips elsewhere, and therefore it's likely there'll be increased activity at the site during peak hours. This can only lead to increased queuing on Branch Road, given egress from the site is only available from this road. And in the event this did happen, there would be additional traffic noise and disturbance to nearby residential properties. The inspector went on to say, it's my judgment there'd be increased noise, traffic and activity from the site, both in terms of the petrol filling station and the convenience store. The effect of the proposal will be over a long period of the day, every day, without respite. That will materially alter the sound environment experienced by surrounding neighbouring properties to their detriment. 
There is nothing in this planning application before you that would materially change traffic flows, volumes, noise and disturbance for local residents as set out by the inspector. And to conclude, the inspector's decision to dismiss the previous application for the filling station and convenience store is a material consideration for the planning committee. For the information presented during the life of this application, it's my professional judgment that the matters raised by the inspector have not been addressed to any material degree. The scheme should again be refused in line with the planning committee's previous decision and the planning inspector's 2018 decision. That's four minutes, Mr. Kitchen. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank you. Thanks for your presentation. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Do we have uh, Mrs. Anne Wainwright? Before you actually set the timer, the residents have asked me to just say that due to ongoing council IDT updates, the residents' recent attempts to add further comments or objections has failed in many cases, and our ability to open all documents to get ready for this meeting and find evidence to support our arguments has been made impossible. And I request that this is taken into consideration and added to the minutes of this meeting on behalf of the residents of Mellorbrook. Okay. Good evening. I live at 13 Long Meadow, Mellorbrook, which shares a boundary with Windmill Hotel. The pub that used to be there was open six days a week, 66 hours in total. They had free deliveries and they had up to 50 vehicles a day visiting as most came for the walking. The petrol station will be open seven days, 104 hours a week, will have eight deliveries minimum, up to 50 vehicles an hour, so an average of up to 500 vehicles in one day. That's a thousand car doors slamming if the driver only gets out, car radios blaring, engines revving, alligator teeth banging as vehicles enter the site from Preston New Road, airlines hissing, people talking, trolleys rattling, let alone the light pollution, air pollution, fire hazards and land contamination. The World Health Organization said a minimum distance of 50 metres between petrol stations and housing. Some airborne compounds such as benzene, which increases the risk of cancer, have been recorded at petrol stations at higher levels than normal urban areas. The windmill that's a petrol station has four houses adjacent. Long, Long Sight Road has one. Five Bar Gate has none, but our, our petrol station that you're looking at tonight has 23 homes surrounding it, 18 within the 50 metre radius. I sent all the councillors today a Mellorbrook business plan that all the businesses were involved in in Mellorbrook to all the councillors. The petrol station and the shop, which were gravely affected, as well as other local businesses, supported Mellorbrook admirably during the Covid crisis. They were there for everybody, particularly the garage on Preston New Road. That, press, that garage will close when this opens, leaving five staff out of work and a family without a, a business. And we will be left with another unusable, derelict and now contaminated site. The, great, the windmill garage asked to extend their opening hours to 11pm a few years ago. The council said residents will be affected, outlook, disturbance, illuminations. So how can you possibly approve this application? The other petrol station on Longsight Road will try to remain open when this opens, but they expect to lose at least six staff. Other local businesses all expect staff redundancies. About 20 staff and up to three businesses are expected to fold when this happens. These are local businesses of local people. We challenged the 30 jobs that's created supposedly in this document. This, a similar business such as the post office in Mellor only has 15 staff, not 30. Failure to adhere to the local plan 2015, the NNPF 2019, says further similar outlets in a near vicinity is not a reason for planning objection, but it does demonstrate that the application is contrary to SRBC planning policy B1, since the amenities for local residents is already being met. 500 objections at least have been given to the council over this development. It is not wanted or needed by the residents of Mellorbrook. 
under NPPF, the development should support communities' health and well-being. But again, this proposal does not. It negatively impacts the living conditions of nearby residents, especially in reference to noise disturbance, which was upheld in the appeal rejection in 2018. We already have adequate provision for residents to access fresh meat and fruit and vegetables in the shops we already have. This is a contradiction to the 84 NPPPF, which says that proposals should not have an unacceptable, unacceptable impact on local roads or the increased traffic on Branch Road to sensitivity to its surroundings. South Ribble Council and Lancashire County Council both state they have a duty to provide air quality, noise and preventing pollution. Surely this development goes against all these duties. This plan went to appeal in 2018 and was denied. The planning inspector stated that the project would introduce a considerable amount of noise and disturbance into the area, which would have significant effect on health, exactly. including mental health and quality of life for residents. This is way more than four minutes as well. Yeah, I've got four, 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 four lines. One. It is also criticised the building and its layout. We understand today that the planning office has advised approval of these amended plans, but we feel that these tweaks do not warrant approval and the issues raised by the re appeal rejection are still relevant, as is the local plan and the NPPF. I and most of the residents of Mellorbrook request you deny this appeal and we also ask, please refuse it today because if you are unsure, refuse. Don't let this go through and let the residents have a voice yeah. and let's go oh, to oh, appeal. OK, thank you. thank you, Mrs. Wayne. Thank you. We have a Mr. Graham Young. Good evening, Planning Committee, Graham Young, Chairman of Samuelsby and Cudill Parish Council. Um, as has been previously reiterated by the members of the public and the professionals, this is something that isn't required in our area. The Parish Council did a SWOT analysis of this particular application. The strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and threats. The strengths, on our, in the Parish Council's opinion, there isn't any. The threat is to the, the local business that's an actual to the, to the local area is fantastic. It's helped out all the people. We couldn't ask for a better citizenship award than these people that are in front of us tonight. The weaknesses are we will have another site that we won't be able to develop. We won't be able to have any place on there for building any affordable housing, any old people's homes, anything else that we could potentially use in the area. The opportunities, what is an opportunity there? We've already got the businesses that cover everything within this is within this application the threat the threat as mrs wainwright has just has been adequately covered is the health aspects to people in the area 50 houses within the areas close by to the garage what do we need that for three years ago i stood in front of this same committee you all voted against it let's hope you can all do the same thing again tonight this is just need against greed. We need what we've got now. We don't need the greed of what's been applied for. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Mr. Young. Um, Mr. Ben Aspinall, please. Good evening, my name is Ben Aspinall and I've been a resident on Branch Road for over four years and I've worked in the area as an engineer at BA Systems for over 15 years. I'd like to start by drawing the panel's attention to an article which was published in the Yorkshire Post on the 14th of April 2021 where a petrol station and shop in Bishop Burton was refused planning permission by the council amid concerns its location was 60 metres, 160 metres from another site would make it unsustainable. The site of this application is only 150 metres from an existing fuel station and if approved the likely outcome is that the existing business will close because it will be unsustainable for two fuel stations to exist within such close proximity. If this happens the residents of Mellorbrook will be left with another derelict site and a business that has been in existence for over 40 years will be forced to close putting jobs at risk. I would also like to raise a question around the longevity of this proposed site. Across the globe, countries and car manufacturers are committed to ending the production of petrol and diesel vehicles. 
with our own UK government stating that only electrical vehicles can be sold from 2030. Of course, there will be legacy vehicles left on the road, but analysts predict these will be gone some 10 to 15 years later. Therefore, if this site goes ahead, it will see a sharp decline in customers within a decade, potentially much fewer customers from 2040 onwards. Furthermore, there are already 12 petrol stations within a three mile radius of Branch Road, so surely we have reached saturation point. The revised plans include electric charge points. However, a report by the Transport Select Committee, which was published by the BBC earlier this week, confirmed that charging an electric car at home is much cheaper than at a fuel station. And therefore, it is possible these charge points will become white elephants in rural areas and only used in large cities. I would also like to mention the traffic and safety concerns the residents of Merlebrook share. The junction from the A677 onto Branch Road is already an, already an incident hotspot, which will only get worse with the increase in traffic caused by a petrol station. The proximity of the pedestrian crossing to this site is also a cause for great concern. The community also have grave reservations about safety and accessibility should there be a fire at the proposed site. And I would like to remind the committee that the area is completely surrounded by residential properties. So the increase in noise, light and air pollution will be significantly detrimental to the entire community. My final two points are born from undertaking legal studies at university. In UK law, we use something called a reasonable person test. With respect to this planning application, I'm unable to envisage a scenario where any reasonable person would believe that having a petrol station on a single carriage A road, 150 metres from an existing facility could be deemed acceptable. Secondly, in UK law, judges use precedents and legislation to guide them when making judgments. I believe the article from the Yorkshire Post I referred to earlier is case in point. Finally, I'd like to thank the panel for listening to our views and trust they will make the correct decision for the res residents of Mellorbrook as they did in 2017 when this application was previously rejected. I politely request that if there's any doubt in your mind, please reject and allow an independent inspector to make a decision. Our village is desperate for more housing or something of social ben benefit, not yet another, sp another spa and fuel station. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mr. Aspinall. Um, unfortunately, business competition isn't a planning consideration, um, so there's nothing we can do about that. Um, Catherine, is there any reason why LCC Highway should object in 2016 and not object on this one? I think um, the ch there's a number of things that have happened. There's been a change in um, not necessarily legislation, but guidance about severity of congestion on roads. So that in itself may have impacted how they might have, have looked at sites previously and how they're looking at them now based on appeal decisions that potentially we've lost. For instance, the one near Penwith and Mills the first time round. Um, and secondly, they've changed the detail of the access arrangements to comply with what Lancashire County Council would wish to see now. OK, thanks for that, Catherine. Do we have the agent uh, Deborah Smith with us this evening? Thank you, Good evening. Chair. Thank you. My client James Hall and its project team have spent considerable time in reviewing the reasons why the appeal was dismissed and how we could look to tackle those reasons in a revised scheme. We feel that the inspector unfairly reached conclusions on noise without evidence, which is important, I think, in, uh, in terms of considering this revised application. So this is uh, which is why the, this application provides further information on all aspects of noise impact, including, for example, car doors closing. The delivery area is bound by a tall acoustic fence and the bin store area is enclosed. This contains noise and removes visual clutter. And as you've heard, the EHO does not have an objection to the proposal. Our client has proposed revised opening hours of 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. with a store opening at 8 a.m. on Sundays and bank holidays. The hours of operation should be considered against the request from your EHO to reduce the hours to only in the morning. 
sorry, only in the mornings, where we're proposed to close earlier as well. As the committee report explains, there is also a fallback position as the pub could reopen without any restrictions on opening. And this is an important material consideration. The other key issue raised by the inspector was design. On reflection, the store, built, store building that was considered by the inspector was bland and uninspiring. And we've considered a number of different design options with the building at the back and the front of the site. The design and layout that has been settled on seeks to reflect the location of the existing pub and in my view is a very well designed high quality building. Additional landscaping, including new tree planting, has also been added, which serves to soften the site. There are no technical objections that would prevent development and no objection from LCC highways. In terms of safety, James Hall followed the guidance for the installation of fuel sites from an industry standard known as the Blue Book, but they go over and above what is required for these regs. The Blue Book requires that tanks only be single lined, for example, James Hall double lines its tanks, no monitoring is required by the Blue Book, yet James Hall used a third party to monitor its sites 24 hours a day and in real time. If this is an issue, the operation ceases immediately and, and it's monitored every few minutes. I trust that you are able to support this policy compliant proposal. I can see that considerable effort has gone into creating a scheme that is appropriate for, this, for, for the site. I disagree that the proposal is not materially different to that which has been refused at appeal. I hope you can see that proposal is significantly different and is capable of support now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Deborah. Thank you for that. Um, Councillor Mullinor. <coughs> thank you, Chair. Um, there's quite a lot of what uh, I was going to say this evening has already been so uh, eloquently put by the speakers we've had before us this evening. I'll be speaking against this application this evening and my key objectives to the application are as follows. There's been no changes in circumstances from the inspector's report that said the proposal would have an unacceptable and adverse effect upon the character and appearance of the area. The size of the application is out of character and it would lead to a considerable uh, amount of vehicle movement in and out of the development, causing excessive noise throughout the day and night with early morning and late night opening hours. This would also put uh, undue pressure onto Branch Road and cause additional traffic noise to local residents. This application will cause increased air pollution, which is one of this council's main drivers to clean up the borough, and yet no air quality report has been provided, which concerns me a great deal. This application is uh, unnecessary and is unwanted um, by the community. We must not forget the Localism Act that gives residents the opportunity to say what they want in their area. Mr Chairman, I do not see that this application is much different from the inspector's appeal decision and therefore would ask the planning committee this evening to vote for refusal. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Council, Councillor Mullineau. I will now open this up to committee. Councillor Yates. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, everybody spoke uh, really from the heart and they know exactly what the community is. Councillor Mullineau uh, just mentioned the Localism Act of 2011, where it states in there that um, the residents of the area should have a say in what is going on in their development. To not to give them the say would not be right for this committee uh, to, to consider. We must give them the full say and we must act on what they want in their area. Moving on, Mr Chairman. Uh, my key objection points to this application are based on the inspector's report and my observations as a local councillor and a Lancashire County councillor as well. The inspector's appeal 
decision remains a material consideration that should underpin the decision on the current application. There have been no changes in circumstances which should invalidate the inspector's conclusions. The inspector said the proposal would have an unacceptable and adverse effect upon the character and appearance of the area. The proposal will be contrary to policy 17 of the central uh, course strategy, local development framework and policies G17 and B1 of the South Ribble Local Plan 2012-26, which seeks to ensure a new development is of high quality, provides an interesting visual environment and is in keeping with the respects of the, of the and the character of the area. This application does neither of them doesn't respect the area and it doesn't respect what the uh, residents require. Mr Chairman, the inspector's finding in relation to the harmful impacts on character and appearance and living conditions are based on matters of principle. In essence, a petrol station, filling station and convenience store use is fundamentally unsuitable in this location within the village. The inspector said in her report, on balance, the harm I have found will considerably outweigh the benefits and the proposal would not represent sustainable development. The proposal would introduce a considerable amount of vehicle movements in and out of the development site with associated activities from customers and noise from cars, car doors slamming, music and vehicles starting of vehicles up. This will therefore uh, be throughout the day and night with early morning and late night opening hours. Furthermore, given the size of the convenience store associated parking, it is likely there will be an additional trips associated with this use. It is likely there will be an increase in activity at the site during peak hours, and this would lead to an increased queuing on Branch Road, given the exit from the site is only available onto Branch Road. There would be additional traffic noise and disturbance to nearby residents. On top of this, Mr Chairman, the movement onto the onto Branch Road, uh, standing traffic existing on Branch Road onto the A67 will result in increased air pollution in this residential area. Lancashire County Council has introduced a weight restriction of 7.5 tonne and a narrowing of Branch Road at this point on the A677. The reason that they did this was to make sure that this area was quite down with traffic that was coming, cutting through from to get to other uh, developments, uh, same as BAE and now the Enterprise Park. So Lancashire County Council did put this in place to, and they narrowed the entrance and they did that on purpose to stop too much traffic using, using that road. I cannot understand or explain why Lancashire County Council Highways have not pointed this out as they have spent thousands of pounds making sure that this area was, uh, was quiet down and made it meant into a, a good area for the residents and children to play. Mr Chairman, no air quality report has been included in this application. The core strategy has a dedicated air quality policy that should be used for this application to ensure the air quality of the area is not affected. Mr Chairman, no matter what tweaks have been made to the design of the current application, cannot make the proposal acceptable because it cannot overcome the matters of principle identified by the inspector and the arm that would result to residents and, and the character of the village. The noise and disturbance problems and the ins that the inspector identified will be experienced by residents daily for a long period of time due to comings and goings and general activity. This is an inescapable future of a petrol station and filling station with a convenience store. 
The inspector in her report said, the advice environmental effect upon the character and appearance is of sufficient weight that there will be social life to the neighbouring residents from increased noise and disturbance. Mr Chairman, the design and changes to the proposal amount to nothing more than window dressing. They cannot make an unacceptable de development acceptable. In relation to the impact of the proposed development on living conditions, the inspector concluded that despite the assessments provided by the applicant, it is in her judgment that there will be increased noise, traffic activity from both sites, both site, both in terms of petrol filling station and the convenience store. The effect of the proposal would be over a long period, period of day and night, every day without respite. This would materially alter the sound environment experienced by surrounding neighbouring residents to their detrimental, be, be, um, well, not benefit. The inspector therefore stated accordingly to community activity would lead to a disturbance of the neighbouring dwellings and fail to provide a high standard of amenity for ex exiting users. This existing uses, sorry. This would adversely and harmful affect their living conditions, contrary to policy 17 of the core strategy, local government framework, and policies G7 and B1 of the South River Local Plan, which seeks to ensure developments do not have a detrimental or adverse impact on neighbouring properties. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I move refusal of this application for the all, all the reasons given above, um, which I'll hand you the paper if the officers require. In the inspector's report, as this application is contrary to policy 17 of the core strategy and policy G17 and B1 of the South River Local Plan, which seeks to ensure that new developments do not have a detrimental adverse impact upon neighbouring properties. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Thanks, Councillor Yates. I think you told us about the core strategy about three times then. Uh, Catherine, would you like to come back on any of those points? Yes, th thank you, Chair. Just two points, really. Um, the air quality aspect. Our environmental health team have worked consistently hard on producing the climate change documents that are, are in front of the Council, but none of the environmental health officers have raised that as a particular concern for this site. And then the second point really is, uh, the County Council uh, are fully aware of the changes from a highways perspective that they've made to address those highway issues, but it's the same highway officers that have again uh, recommended approval for this scheme and consider that the access it, are acceptable and that the impact on amenity within the road is acceptable as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, Catherine. Councillor Flannery. Thanks, Chair. Um, well, Catherine, you've just um, you've just uh, concluded my last point, but can I just put a bit of perspective and context to the applicant application, please? Because it's it's very difficult sitting at a planning committee when you're seeing uh, something like this in front of you, because um, first of all, residents who get up and speak, it's very difficult to do. So you did it, and you did it well. <clears throat> um, Personally speaking, but it's not my decision. I'd like to see affordable housing. I'd like to see a care facility on a site like this. But unfortunately, that's not what's in front of us. The site's been redundant for seven years. And now this is a solution to a, a, obviously a problem, a problematic site. The problem we have on committee, just to explain, because there's lots of people here tonight, is we're getting a, a, a comprehensive report, a very thorough report and it's policy compliant. So we've got a balance in terms of where we take it, because if we go against com policy compliant applications, it puts the council at risk. But nevertheless, obviously the feeling is strong from the community. Um, your fellow councillors have mentioned already about uh, uh, the highways and so is Catherine. We need the tools to help us. 
if the highways objected, it would help us to, to do that, but they haven't. If the environmental health and air quality would do the same, it would help us, but they haven't. Um, we, it puts us in a very, very difficult position, what, is what I'm telling you. So whatever the outcome is tonight, please don't think that we haven't considered every angle. But I was going to suggest, Chair, for compromise, because clearly someone is put forward a solution to a site. This model, to be fair, is seen in other places. I've seen it. I live in a community where there's been recently the establishment of a petrol station. I take the Chair's point about competition, because I wouldn't like to see a new business adjacent to a, an existing business which has been there for many years, but we can't consider that, I'm afraid. Um, I was going to suggest a deferment uh, as a compromise on the basis that we went back to highways and to say, are you serious? Are you are you sure you're, you're saying this is okay when before you didn't? And also the air quality issue, which is something which we are consistent on and we are trying to improve for our residents. So, Chair, I was going to propose the two things which Catherine answered. So I'm looking to our legal officer here. I don't know if I can propose a deferment on the basis that probably Catherine's going to say that they've been answered. So thank you. Sorry about going on. Councillor Flannery, you, you, if you wish to propose deferment, that, that is your gift. Well, I'm going to propose a deferment on the basis of the air quality. And I know Catherine probably doesn't want to air this to highways because, because with respect to the highways, excuse me for going on again, we, we always get no comment. It's, you know, with respect to Lancashire County and their highways department, I wish they did turn up and I wish they did object to a few things, but they don't. So it doesn't help us. So I would like to propose a deferment by way of compromise only. I don't want to waste anyone's time, but I certainly don't want to see the residents get sort of, you know, get a decision against them because it's policy compliance on the basis that we haven't turned every stone. Thank you. Would you second that, Councillor Lomax? I certainly, I certainly would second that, certainly on air quality. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Yates, are you still proposing refusal? I'm still, um, at, at this moment, I'm still proposing re refusal. I would have accepted the, the deferment if, uh, if the Councillor had, had, had taken to account the Localism Act of 2011, where it gives the right to the residents to, to say what they want in their area. I think, I think that, should, that should be looked into. And if that could go into it as well, uh, then I would be uh, leaning to uh, going with the firm. Thank you. Alex, can I have some legal advice on this? Um, the Localism Act, does it hold much strength for them? I think, Councillor, it might be referring to a neighbourhood plan, but I'm not aware that there's one in place. There's a Central Government Localism Act from 2011. Yeah, but that, um, I, beyond I can that, help I, I, if you wish. I don't know what um, Councillor Yates is referring to. Okay, okay, I can help you, Chair. It's, uh, it, the Localism Act was passed by Parliament in 2011. Yeah, I've just uh, said that. It was put, it was put forward by... Uh, Pick, pickle, Pickering, uh, Eric Pickles, Pickles, Eric Pickles. So it is there, uh, and uh, I'm, so I'm really surprised that uh, we all don't know about that because that's part of our duty to be up to date on all aspects of planning. Right, thank you, Mr. Jones. Okay, thanks, Councillor Yates. Right, so I've had a proposal for deferment from Council Flannery for air quality and the highways. LCC strike again. I've had that seconded by Councillor Chris Lomax. Councillor Phil Smith. Can, can we just see some photographs back up on their chair, please, about the, with the, the location of the housing around the proposed filling station? Catherine, if you would. But, uh, that, but that might just be helpful. That 
Okay, yeah. Councillor Smith. Yeah, thank you, Chair. If you just keep that up a bit there. Um, I mean, I've been up, up there today and sort of walked around the site, walked across it. Um, the road was absolute chaos. It's, it was really, really busy. I suppose it didn't help with that. Uh, what is it? Branch Road was uh, junction there was uh, was absolutely blocked off with some work that was going on at the end of that road. Uh, so, but I did actually walk right the way around the site. Um, it is a very, very busy road. Um, traffic travelling at some sort of speed. Um, I can't see for the life of me how uh, a development of this sort round there wouldn't affect that local community in a detrimental way. Um, so saying that, um, what is there at the moment and how you get rid of what is there at the moment because the residents don't own it we don't own it um somebody else owns it um it's totally out of virtually out of everybody's control and what is there at the moment i have to say is an eyesore it's not very pretty um when you see the artist's illustration of what a shell petron station looks like and the development itself and the building itself um looks to me like a vast improvement so uh, we're a bit of a, a quandary with the, the whole thing um, with regard to air quality and, and what comes out of petrol stations obviously um, do we do we know where the air vents are that uh, vent the uh, petrol tanks and what their location is on on that particular site with in the relationship to the housing Catherine I've got to be honest. I, I don't, to be fair, where where the vents are. Um, <clears throat> that's fair enough. No. You don't. You don't. No, no, that, that, that's fine. I was, I was just wondering because every every bit of fuel you put in, the air comes out. You can't put fuel in without contaminated air coming out, and that that's just the way it works with petrol. Uh, fumes come out of there. Um, I know I've been involved in petrol and selling petrol for many many years. So uh, the, the 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 location of such. Um, uh, events are, are really, really important. Um, obviously, obviously. Yeah, uh, can we have less interruption, please? Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously, petrol tankers have got to access the site and egress the site on a, on a regular basis. Um, that branch road is very, very narrow. And now I don't know whether the County Council have taken that into consideration. OK, an articulated vehicle will turn on, not on a sixpence, but it will turn on very narrow road. Uh, I think Councillor Yates was uh, quite right. It is a narrow road. I admit, I don't know. I didn't know that County Council had um, narrowed that road specifically to, to cut the traffic down and, and make it safer. Uh, but then to increase the traffic on Branch Road itself seems to me a bit sort of, I don't know, just seems a silly way of doing things. Um, it doesn't seem right somehow. Um, so, I mean, I, I could almost go away with go with refusal, but, uh, you know, I, I could also go with, with deferral. But I would like um, a real good look at um, uh, the air quality there and also the, the traffic movements on and off that off that particular site. Um, oh, just listen to the rest of the debate, chair. If anything, anybody's got anything else to say on that? But um, I mean, that looks great, doesn't it? But when when you look at it then in context with the properties around it, perhaps it's not so great. I have to say. Thank you, chair. Okay, I've got Councillor Adams, then Councillor Mrs. Mary Green. Thank you, chair. Um, this is a, a very difficult um, item, I think. Um, I think the residents' uh, concerns were very well put. Um, and, you know, I do sympathise them, sympathise with them a lot. We kind of have, a, as, a, as a committee member, I feel as though our hands are tied slightly. We constantly feel like this, particularly uh, when it comes to highways issues. Um, LCC highways have, have said that this is compliant. So, you know, as a committee, 
we can't then go against them and say use that as a, a reason for refusal. Um, and that's why our hands are tied. So I do have sympathy um, with you, uh, particularly on the highways issues. It is constantly an issue here. Um, it's an issue I'd, I'd, I'd say uh, to take up uh, with your county councillors um, and get it changed. Um, I wish we could. We definitely need to um, because it's a constant problem that we hear often on this committee. Um, so I think I do support Councillor Flannery's um, motion in terms of deferment. I think that's a sensible approach to take. Um, I think refusal at this stage, I don't think, I, I, I just don't think we can do it because it's policy co compliant. So I think on balance, I think and on balance, I think that's what we need to do here. We need to be pragmatic about the decision we make. Uh, and I think in terms of the most important people here are the residents. Um, and I think Councillor Flannery's uh, motion kind of appeases that as, as much as we possibly can as a committee. Um, and that's, that is why I will uh, support that motion. Thank you. OK, thanks, Councillor Adams. Councillor Mr. Mary Green. Thank you, Chair. I think we're here tonight looking at this application as we look at all the applications. We must take all things into consideration. Um, the fact that LCC haven't put any objections in isn't too surprising as they very rarely do, but that doesn't mean to say that they shouldn't do. And I think on an application like this that um, it's, it's been told it's a very busy road, there's a lot of traffic, it's going to increase the traffic greatly um, if we get this application through for a garage uh, there's going to be a lot more traffic a lot more air pollution we've heard all about that um, and we've we, we also realize it's it looks an eyesore at the moment so something needs doing with that site but that doesn't mean to say that we have something put in that they've already got there they've already got a petrol station why would they want another one with all the increased traffic and pollution and all the rest of it we also need to look at the side as well of the residents. Um, Councillor Yates was absolutely bang on. There's a localism act that we should take into consideration for the residents, which is very, very important. And I feel that we're a little bit too um, bland, shall we say, that we're not getting direction, we're not getting guidance from LCC or anywhere else about any problem that could come from this application. So I feel we need a lot more information before we either refuse it or pass it so i think i would be leaning towards deferment as well to get further information okay, thanks, councillor green we've got councillor watson councillor moon and then to tie up councillor yates and then we're going to go to the vote and the vote will be on the amendment for deferral councillor watson thank you thank you chair um one of the residents who spoke, and again, I agree with uh, yourself, Chair, that they all spoke very well, um, did mention, for example, the uh, decision over in Hull, uh, or East Riding, sorry, um, uh, that they did refuse it based upon, uh, partly. Um, Council Watson. Yeah, businesses uh, yeah, can't be uh, considered. And that's not South Wibble Borough Council, though. No, no, but... It's just to say that, we'll that each it, application as it's it, it, it'll, you'll understand in a second. Um, as a, also, it was to do with its location in the Green Belt, that particular refusal. Um, and even with that, that refusal has been overturned at appeal this year. Um, and that's the position we're in here. If we refuse this, the odds are, because it is policy compliant, we will be in a situation where it is also overturned um, at great cost and you will still end up with the same development there. Um, so I think what Councillor Flannery has said is completely reasonable. It's probably the only real chance uh, that we have to find a legitimate reason if we are looking um, for one to potentially have a refusal. Otherwise, I don't see how we can refuse this on any of the conditions, even the location of the surrounding buildings. It's very similar to the one that's just down the road from it. It's also surrounded. 
Um, and yeah, as I say, they, they, we, we're just opening ourselves up to appeal. Uh, obviously, yes, it could be also that, that Lancashire Highway is hands tied in that the reason that they are accepting so many and only refusing these is because the legislation they're working on has a similar situation that they, they, they don't have the room to go against it because they would be open to uh, appeals and legal challenge. So um, as much sympathy as I do have with the residents, uh, I believe that deferral is the best we can achieve tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Watson. Councillor Moon. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just a, really, just a couple of points. I want to say, you know, we've been quite critical of Lancashire County Council highways as we often are, but I think we do need to be mindful that they have previously raised concerns about this application site. They have previously objected with regards to this application site, and now those same officers are saying the amendments have been made and they're satisfied. So I think we can't have our cake and eat it to sit here and say Lancashire aren't raising objections when they previously have. I think actually it speaks louder for this application that they are now not. Uh, I think the same with regards to air quality. Environmental health have not raised that as an issue. So we're going to defer on the points of highways and environmental health when actually arguably we've already had those answers. It is policy compliant, which doesn't necessarily sit well with me, but it is what it is. I think the very strong feeling from the residents, I mean, there is an incredible number of objections to this site from residents. You know, it's damning. And I think we have to weigh that into the mix. I think some arguments are tenuous around the residential property element. We've got another station 150 metres away in arguably the same residential area. But on the whole, the residents are very strongly spoken. I don't feel I could support refusal for this application. I know that won't sit well in the room this evening, but I don't feel I could based on the information that's in front of me. I think if the committee want to defer, if that's if it goes that way, for completeness they can. But I have a sense that we may well get this back with the same answers that we've already got, Chair. Uh, I feel in some respects the the writing almost feels like it's on the wall, which is not a nice position to be in when you've got a community who are so loudly saying to us, this is not where we want to go. Um, so I just wanted to, to put my marker in the sand, really, Chair, um, and that was my contribution. We'll see where it goes. OK, thank you. Councillor Yates. No, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, Mr Chair, Councillor Flannery did say that he would accept uh, the local, Localism Act 2011 that uh, looks after the, the residents and gives them their say into his department. <coughs> you didn't add that when you read it out before, but if you if you didn't mean that, I uh, apologise to you for that. Councillor what, what I can't understand this, Mr Chairman, is that this committee and with with a few with a few tweaks. We're now looking at saying, you know, it could be a possibility that it could go through. When, when we look at the last application that came through in this committee to a to a member, turn this application down on noise. That's one of the most thing noise uh, out of contact contact for the for the area out of character for the area. We turned it down to a committee member on that. And then to turn round and say that the inspector, who also said it's out of character to the area, and the policy for noise, she said it's detrimental to the residents. For us to turn round and say that this is policy complaint, com correct, it's policy correct, makes a nonsense of what we're looking at tonight. I would say that if we say it's it, for noise, it's not. It's it's uh, policy correct. Then we're going. We're going against everything that we said in the last one. We're going against everything that the inspector said. And I'd like the officer to explain why suddenly the noise and the character of the area is now policy correct when it hasn't been by the inspector and it hasn't been by the last plan committee. What has changed? It, we're asking Lancashire County Council at Highways to tell us what has changed and we'll be asking them hard and long. I want to know of our officers what has changed to say that noise, out of character and disturbance is different now than what it was before. Thank you Mr Chairman. Councillor Flannery. Thanks Chair. Yeah of course I'll accept 
Council Eight has proposed in terms of adding to my deferral. But just to make it clear, I have a track record in, in, in the planning committee of always looking to prioritise our residents' concerns. So <clears throat> if it was missed, um, I, I'm, well, I'm not going to apologise. I didn't miss it. My point was I want to do everything we can to help the residents, but we've got to also balance the, the, the policy. Thank you. Um, I think the officers could have a word with you after the meeting, Mr. Uh, Councillor Yates, about what's changed, because I want to go to the vault on the deferment now, please. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Whatever. The, perhaps they can speak to you after this meeting. Um, right, so the, this is for deferment. Uh, Councillor Adams? Four. Councillor Donoghue? Four, Chair. Councillor Flannery? Four. Councillor Mary Green? Four, Chair. Councillor Harry Hancock? Four, Chair. Councillor John Hesketh. Four, Chair. Councillor Chris Lomax. Four, Chair. Councillor Caroline Moon. Four. Councillor Phil Smith. Four. Councillor Gareth Watson. Four, Chair. Councillor Barry Yates. Four. And I am also for deferment, so we can speak to LCC and we can speak to the environmental officers. Alex, would you um, give us the re result of the vote, please? Thank you, Chair. Members have voted unanimously to defer determination of the application. Thank you very much. That's 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 it for this item on the agenda. Uh, we're going to have a comfort break, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, if you'd like to leave um, in an in an orderly fashion, you can use either that those doors or, or these doors here. Yeah, Thank 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, item number seven on tonight's agenda is Clifton House, the Vineyard, Walton Liddale. Um, Catherine Lewis to present, please. Thank you, Chair. The application site. is located off Chorley Road. Waltonley Dale in a small gated uh, housing development. So we've got A6 with Waltonley Dale. This is the application site here, and there's a gated community um, located here of about 11 or 12 houses that then takes a track down to the bottom of a, a valley, if you will. These are very steep sides here, and we've got the River Darwin to the north. The site is subject to a number of environmental designations. It's policy one, green belt, policy G7, green infrastructure, policy G16, biodiversity and ecology. It's a biological heritage site known as Holland Wood. There's a tree preservation order across the site and it's an ancient woodland. The site is also within flood zone two and three. And this is an extract from the South Ribble local plan uh, to demonstrate those um, environmental designations.
excuse me, sorry, the slide won't uh, move on. Is there an IT person? Just having a few IT issues here. Um, we'll, not, we'll, we'll be as quick as we can be. Okay, we're back, good to go again, Catherine. Thank you. Okay, so um, this next slide uh, just demonstrates um, the siting of approved dwellings. So in 1970, planning permission was granted for a new dwelling um, located in this area here. Usually, if permission has not been implemented after five years, then the permission will be deemed lapsed. In 2012, a lawful development certificate was granted, which confirmed that a start on site had previously been made, and the certificate was supported by photographs showing the foundation trenches having been constructed and some limited roadworks. And it was therefore deemed um, that the certificate should be granted that it was a live permission and the technical term is that it's an extant permission and that was for a property of about 480 uh, square meters two stories with a garage at a lower level this uh, plan demonstrates the current application the applicant seeks to surrender the extant planning permission and provide for a smaller property in a revised location so this is the position of the previously approved dwelling and this is the proposed um, bungalow sited here. The current application seeks to relocate the dwelling some 21 metres further west from the 1970s permission and would measure about 259 square metres. It will be set some 37 metres away from the River Darwin rather than the previously approved 11 metres. And this slide demonstrates in more detail those locations. This is the previously approved plan and this is the siting of the proposed bungalow. And this is where the extant permission exists that's already been started. Next plan just demonstrates some elevations of what the current proposal would be. Uh, in main parts about 10 metres times 17 metres. It will be on raised ground levels to address the ground conditions. And materials would include uh, render, larch, cedar cladding and a grey standing seam roof. And this just is a slide that demonstrates what was previously there. It was a much larger scheme over two levels um, with a garage at kind of this existing ground level coming across here. And then this would be the, um, the, the works that will be required in order for that construction to take place. And we've got a few photographs of what the site looks like. So this is the exact existing access to the site adjacent to number 5A, the vineyard. And this is the gated area that then goes down the hill. And then that's looking back up towards the hill. You can see some of the properties on that skyline. And then this is the current approved scheme is located around here. And this is where the application site is. And this is the access track that you can see in a little bit more detail over on that slide. This is the view looking towards the River Darwin with the application site around here. And then again, we've got the application site, which is in a clearing. And then the current approved scheme is located here. As part, oh, I'm sorry, this is very um, faint. I'm so sorry about that. This slide demonstrates the curtilage of the proposed uh, bungalow, which will be identified here. And the applicant has um, confirmed that it is acceptable to a smaller area to kind of tighten that residential curtilage which then which could be then controlled through various planning conditions and these are just some uh, visuals showing the approach of what the bungalow would look like with the difference in materials it's a much smaller scheme and you can see it's just slightly raised on the raised mound 
and then again it's a visual of the rear and then so we just go back to that building there so the main issues are the applicant submitted further details to address the environment agency's concerns which were expressed in the report because the environment agencies requested a holding objection so basically because it's in a flooded area or an area that's liable to flooding because there's been a change in the environmental um, way that that flooding is now assessed from the 1970s they require a kind of depression being constructed in an area that's acceptable to themselves that would then store any rainfall that would happen and then would then leach back into uh, the river to enable that flood risk management to be managed. There are no uh, formal objections from any of the statutory consultees. Most of the consultees recognise that this is an exceptional situation. They acknowledge that it's unique and on that basis, it would be very difficult to sustain an objection. So people like the ecology services would ordinarily not be supporting an application within this kind of an area. But because it's got that live extant permission, this is trading off that for a smaller scheme. So to conclude, it will be a smaller scheme. Um, there will be a number of conditions, quite a lot of conditions that are detailed in the report to control the development, including the reduced residential curtilage, taking away the permitted development rights, landscaping conditions and ecological and landscape ones as well. And the fallback position, if this application isn't supported tonight, is that the applicant could continue to construct the larger dwelling with very little control over the proposal from the council's perspective on that surrounding sensitive area. So on that basis, Chair, the application is recommended approval subject to a legal agreement to give up or rescind the current approval and for the continuing working with the Environment Agency to ensure that their concerns are addressed. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks for that, Catherine. Thanks for your... <coughs> Thanks for, th thanks for that report. Um, right, I've got four registered speakers who are against this application. And can we start with Simon Keeley, please? You can take your mask off while you're speaking, Simon. Right, good afternoon. Uh, good evening, even, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name's Simon Keeley. I live at Five The Vineyard. I lived there 13 years. I'm also a director of the Vineyard Management Company, which um, represents the original 10 houses built on the vineyard, but not the 11th house that was built several years later, in which the applicant has a family interest. So there's three, there's three particular points of objection I want to raise with you this evening. The first one relates to uh, it being ancient woodland and a biological heritage site. So Holland Woods classed as an ancient woodland in the LCC inventory and only 2% of the country is classed as such. So it's a very scarce commodity. It's over 400 years old and as you've seen from the photographs, there are no buildings in it at the moment at all. I think these days we're a little bit more aware, intelligent and considerate about the environment and sustainability than maybe we were in the 1970s. So um, there's rarely a day goes by when you don't see David Attenborough or Greta Thunberg on the television telling us that it's, it's up to us. We are able to stop irreparable damage to the environment. So we need to protect this, um, this woodland. Second point I'd make relates to the floodplain. So the proposed site is in the basin of Holland Wood on a floodplain. The local plan identifies Waltonley Dale as a high risk flood area and suggests development should be directed away from areas of high flood risk. The River Darwin flooded as recently as the early 2020. And it's not for me a case of if it floods again, it's a case of when. Just after this, there was a small wooden hillock put up in the wood, maybe a couple of feet high. Anyone that's seen that will know that that's uh, very likely to get washed away at the next flooding. At the same time as the flooding in 2020, it set off a chain reaction 
whereby significant trees were uprooted and there's subsequently been progressive landslip and land erosion which is ongoing which threatens my property now i've raised this with the applicant in person and with family members who all refuse to take any action even though structural engineers have suggested that remedial action is needed quite urgently so for me that demonstrates a complete irresponsible approach to land management final point on flooding funnily enough i had a walk i had a walk down to the river darwin on the on the proposed site this lunchtime and the river and the river's getting quite high now after 24 hours of, uh, of rain third and final point uh, it relates to the previous planning application so yeah i understand that the previous application was submitted in the early 1970s that there was a lawful certificate granted in 2012 and a material change in 2015 but we're now eight years later and 50 years since the uh, the original application went in so um essentially i'd suggest that, that there hasn't been a substantive start and that the application has expired i think furthermore we've we've seen how the uh, the, the footprint and the um, proposed area has moved from the original position so therefore i would suggest that because the site has moved, the original planning application is now no longer applicable and it's invalid. So in summary, it's an ancient woodland, we all collectively need to protect that, it's a scarce commodity. It's on a floodplain, it is highly likely to flood again and th for me the final point about the previous planning application, it's, um, it's now invalid and um, invalid. Right, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks for your Presentation, Simon. Okay, do we have Kay Keeley? Okay, you have four minutes, okay. Right. Good evening, my name is Kay and I live on the vineyard. I have lived there since the houses were first built in 2008. I enjoy living there and one of the main reasons for choosing to live there was it was near the woods and all the wildlife the protected species of bats and the deer frequently roam around the woods near to my garden and I'm upset now that someone wants to start building on there. Where will it all end? Therefore, I object to the planning application for the following reasons. Within the South Ribble local plan, which I have read through, which defines the rules that govern acceptable construction, there are several policies that the application does not comply with. G1 of the Green Belt states that planning permission will not be granted for construction of new buildings. G12 refers to development not being permitted in a green corridor. G13 refers to not permitting development which would prejudice its purpose, trees and woodland, especially ancient woodland. G16, biodiversity and nature conservation, protect and conserve biological and geological assets before they are lost forever. Hollandwood is listed in the South Ribble Local Plan as a biological heritage site. Another reason for, for objection is the access. There is no public vehicle access to, these, to Hollandwood. The applicant is proposing to access the site via private land. This private land is owned by the 10 households on the, ve on the vineyard. It's privately owned and completely maintained by us. And we pay quite a substantial amount of money each month into a fund to be able to keep that in good condition. The 11th house on the vineyard, 5A, who are related to the applicant are not, are not part of the vineyard management company and do not contribute in any way whatsoever to the funding of keeping that site in good condition. The vineyard management company owned the road from the metal gates on Chorley Road to the wooden picket gate at the entrance to Holland Wood. There is not a road from the wooden picket gate down to the basin of Holland Wood. There is only a track that is partly topped with stone chippings. Emergency vehicles would not be able to access the wood. 
and LCC highways would not have any issue with these tracks or roads because they have no responsibility for them. That is completely paid for by the 10 residents who work hard to pay to maintain this private land. Thirdly, and health and act safety concerns, 12 children of school age or below live on the vineyard and play on this courtyard on a regular basis. Construction vehicles would present a very dangerous hazard. And the landowners, the vineyard, they will not grant access over their land to the applicant. I sincerely hope that the committee consider my objections and I thank you for your time. OK, thanks very much for, the, for your presentation, Kate. Thank you. We have David Dunlop. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you have four minutes to present, OK? Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is David Dunlop. I'm the Area Conservation Officer for Central and Western Lancashire at the Wildlife Trust. Uh, our objection to this initially is one principle because it's in adjacent to an ancient woodland and these are irre irreplaceable habitats. But to go on to the detail of the particular site, uh, we find ourselves uh, as uh, planning officer has just said, uh, in the invidious position where we have to choose between a, a 1970s planning application, rather benighted time for environmental protection, and this less bad, but far from ideal application that's before us. Um, this site and um, band of woodland uh, along the River Darwin has is now identified as part of a woodland ecological network in the South River local plan. Uh, its history in this particular area has been rather checkered. It seems to have been cleared in the early 1900s for agriculture and then developed secondary woodland, then had that little bit that's uh, in the 1970s um, area been cleared again. Um, regenerated a little but because it's had some hard standing down, not done it very well. Um, as I said, these ancient woodland habitat, which on my figure is down to 1.2% land cover, I think that's the figure for the UK rather than England, is really irreplaceable on any realistic time scale. Um, the best we can do for nature's recovery, uh, given that the uh, government itself wants to uh, see 30% of uh, England's land area managed in some way for nature uh, by 2030, is to ensure that compensation for these colossal historic losses is substantial and lasting. Uh, based on what I have seen, it's hard to see how this will be achieved without advance site before any planning consent of the applicant's proposals for management of the woodland uh, that remains and uh, security that this will enhance the degraded woodland on the site and the associated network on the lower river Darwin and that it will actually be delivered. Uh, unless that can be confidently secured, it's, it's our contention that the development of the site should not yet be consented. Uh, on a related uh, issue, uh, we only value what we know and uh, we can't uh, won't protect what we don't value. Uh, so I would also be anxious to ensure that public access uh, that currently exists de facto to the, this area could be maintained in some way. There is a single public footpath through it, but that's all I'm aware of. Thank you. OK, thanks, Mr Dunlop. Um, we have an Alex Wong. Thank you, members of the council. I'm number eight of the private vineyard estate, and I express my concerns with the health and safety of our children who play in the courtyard of the estate, as increased traffic will pose greater risk and hazards. 
it'll be another year when we have to keep our children indoor again if the planning is approved. I ask the members of the council to think about the residents of the estate, also the community and South Ribble. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Um, right. Just before I invite the agent, I'm, I'm right that he, the applicant could could build there now. With yes, chair, he has permission uh, from 1970 for a much larger development with no or hardly any conditions, and that's because. They started works. There's a legal certificate that can't be now um, made unvalid or invalid. That is a legal certificate to say that there's planning permission for that dwelling on site. Right, okay, thanks, Catherine. Uh, do we have um, Ben Pycroft, the agent? If you'd like to come, you can take your mask off. Just hold oh, the speak button's on anyway, so you can just make a presentation. You have four minutes, okay. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name's Ben Pycroft. I work at Emery Planning and I'm speaking on behalf of the applicant, Mr Fowler. Firstly, we would like to thank your planning officers for their engagement through this planning application process. Your officer's report comprehensively sets out the planning issues and fully addresses all of the points made by the four previous speakers. This is an unusual set of circumstances and it is highly unlikely to be replicated anywhere else across the borough. As noted in the report, a positive certificate of lawfulness has been issued by the, this council for the erection of a dwelling on the site. There is no scenario whereby the site remains undeveloped. If planning permission was refused for the scheme now before you, then the applicant would have no option but to pursue the approved scheme through to completion as he is committed to living at the site with his family who are already rooted within the local community. In terms of a comparative exercise, the scheme now before you is roughly 50% smaller in size than the approved scheme, is over 25 metres further away from the River Darwin than the approved scheme, and it presents the opportunity for the council to secure planning conditions and this includes permitted development rights for future extensions and biodiversity enhancements. The approved scheme is subject to no such planning conditions and the council could not exercise any control over such matters. Members will note that there is a holding objection from the Environment Agency, however the agency has confirmed that they have no principal objection to the proposed development given the extant approval and my client's flood risk consultant, Betts Associates, are working with the Environment Agency to address minor technical detail. The proposed scheme is undoubtedly better than the approved scheme in environmental terms with net benefit in terms of the openness of the greenbelt, biodiversity, flood risk and the integrity of the woodland. We would therefore respectfully ask that you endorse your officer recommendation and resolve to grant planning permission this evening. Thank you. OK, thanks for your presentation. OK, and we will now. Sorry, so, sorry um, I didn't know you were there, Councillor Chisholm. Would you like to address the committee? Thank you, Chair. Yes, I would. Um, I won't repeat what's been said. I'm representing the, uh, the residents that live on the vineyard whose concern you've just heard. I'll not repeat them, but would like to add that it is a protected ancient woodland, as you've just already heard. And as such, I ask the committee to refuse this application on the grounds of inappropriate development that is mean harmful to the green belt, according to policy G7 of the South River Local Plan and Policy Framework. I also add the access to this site is through a private road and as such consideration should be given to the residents who live there. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Chisholm. Uh, Councillor Phil Smith. Yeah, yes, thank you, Chair. We're switched on again now. <laughs> right, th thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, 
This is a really difficult one, I have to say, and uh, I've spent many a, an hour reading this report on several occasions. Um, uh, and it, it actually doesn't get better with uh, reading more and more. Um, so what I'm about to say, I, w I um, would attach very little weight to the fallback position in planning terms. Um, what may have been acceptable in planning terms in 1970 and 1971 would not necessarily be acceptable today. The South Ribble local plan adopted <clears throat> in July 2015 is more protective of Greenbelt issues of flooding and the environment. <clears throat> and I would like to propose refusal of this application for the following reasons. One, the first one, I would attach a little weight to the fallback position. Number two, this is inappropriate development in Greenbelt uh, policy G1, which should be given more weight than the previous uh, than the previous fallback position. I believe that very special circumstances do not exist to create this development. Number three, inappropriate, inappropriate change, in, inappropriate change to the character of the biological heritage site, green infrastructure and ancient woodland of the area. And number four, um, is the Environment Agency who still hold, have this holding position. Um, and as far as I can see, uh, in with regard to 7.5 in the report, is still maintaining this, maintaining this position that the development will be safe for its lifetime and where possible, reduce overall flood risk. Um, I don't think that's possible on this site. I have visited it on a couple of occasions. It's a beautiful site down there. And to be quite honest, any sort of development um, would would really affect the amenity. Um, and it's something that we as South Ribble Council and as a planning committee should be looking uh, to keep and nurture and look after. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Smith. Did you propose refusal? Propose refusal, Chair, on those Thanks two. Thanks for that. Uh, Councillor Flannery. Thanks, Chair. <clears throat> um, yeah, once again, it's, this is, it, it seems in Congress, to, it's what we sort of see every time we sit in, in our committee, when we're trying to protect the green belts, we're trying to um, not build in floodplains, etc. But, but, but the reality is, and the difficulty here is, and it comes back to what we said before about um, the highways, we've got natural in, natural England, there is no objection to this. You know, when Simon spoke before and Kay and Dave and Alex, they spoke again brilliantly, they make great points, but the statutory consultees are not helping any of us to influence or give us the tools to sort of go with what you want. And obviously we always put our residents first, like we've been saying before. The problem here and the balance here is, and I think the chair's raised it with our officer, <coughs> It's a balance of two things. If you refuse it, you're going to get a bigger property built in the same, more or less the same environment. If we approve it, you're going to get a more considered modern um, development. But again, in the same area, the, the users, residents can't win in this one because of the history of the site, I'm afraid. So um, I, I've got no, I can see no other reason other than to go with what the officer's recommending. So I'm going to go for approval, Chair. Yeah. Councillor Yates. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I quite agree with Councillor Thronery saying that uh, nobody seems to have objected that uh, that is where we come in as a committee because we can't always agree with what the officers recommend or, or the Lancashire County Highways put forward. It's down to us uh, to look at our own areas and, and make sure so. I cast doubt many a time on some of the uh, proposals and questions that could, don't, well, no answers come back from uh, environmental agencies and places like that. But to move on from that, as a planning committee, we are told that we must look at each application on its own merits. 
this application is in two different locations. So I think that it must be treated as two applications. The existing application, this area of Greenbelt in ancient wood, woodland as an approved application for a property granted in 1971, with a local development as stated and a material change in 2015. But with a time lapse of eight years and no work having started, is this planning application live or indeed is it needing renewing? I've been down to the site. I cannot see any evidence of any footings being put in, any evidence of any ground being turned over or any evidence whatsoever of a property started to be uh, built, no foundations, no nothing. The application in front of committee tonight is a completely different, in a completely different location than the one approved in 1971 and must be considered on its own merit as stated on page 34, 1.21. The application is in full for the erection of a bungalow and a detached garage in Allendale's Wood, an ancient woodland located in Greenbelt and is described as biological heritage site with green infrastructure and wildlife corridors and in flood zone three. On page 35 at, at 5.6, it states, there is existing tarmac road within the site this is not correct as there, there is a loose stone track that is used as a footpath over private land with a sign saying no vehicle access. Indeed, this is in, and when you look at the uh, Lancashire County Council footpaths, this is not even a footpath. It's a just an, it's been allowed by the owner for, to go across the land. It's not a registered footpath whatsoever and it has not got a tarmac road down to it. A new defence for the protection of Preston and Walkley Dale and Salisbury in this location has been identified as a new flood, new flood defence as being a floodplain for the River Darren. The environmental agency are maintaining their objection to this application as a flood risk assessment will be in place stating that the development will, is not in place stating that the development would be safe for its lifetime without risk of flooding. In our local plan chapter 12 tackling climate change page 102 managing flood risk it says Waltley Dale is a high risk flood zone. So it's actually telling us there that this area is a high risk flood zone. If we look and I can understand why the environmental agency are still obtaining their objection is because when you look at the design of the flood zone from Preston right through to Sandsbury, going up the River Darwin on the other side of the, the, the river, there is a, a wall, defence wall. On this side, there isn't. And the reason for that is because this side of the river where the property wants to go is an open floodplain within the flood zone of the environmental agency. National planning policy framework, paragraphs 143 and 145 states, inappropriate development is harmful to the green belt and should not be approved. South River local plan, Policy G1 Greenbelt Justification, it says, page 77 at 1024, inappropriate development that affects the openness of land of the land would not be in accordance with the objections, objectives of this policy. Replacement or of an existing property may be acceptable inside its existing boundary. This, this application is for a property outside its, its uh, existing boundary, so fails to be policy compliant. This application is for a property in a different location and is a new building, Greenbelt, and is not reuse of, of an existing building or in an appropriate, in an appropriate development in Greenbelt. 
Green corridors and wedges, policy 12. Development will not be permitted in green corridors. The green corridors form part of the council's overall policy of protecting and enhancing the nature of built up environment and open nature adjacent or within an urban or wider green infrastructure set out in policy G7. These are our policies. Policy 13, Woodlands and Development, page 91. A planning permission will not be permitted where the proposal affects ancient woodlands, including individual ancient woodlands. That's very clear. It's saying in our, our policies, we will not build in ancient woodland. Mr Chairman, I'd like to second uh, the refusal but would ask the uh, proposal for refusal if you could also add in policy G12, G13 of the South River Local Plan um, and paragraphs 143 of the National Policy Framework. Thank you Mr Chairman. Uh, Catherine, would you like to um, reply? Thank you, Chair. Thanks for that opportunity. I do share um, a lot of sympathy with Councillor Yates in what he said in describing all those policies and all those environmental designations. And I think as officers, um, it would never be anybody's intention to recommend approval for any kind of residential development in that location. However, there is a live planning permission that is probably just under twice the size of this current scheme that could be built or could be started tomorrow with absolutely no conditions about hours of operation, about the delivery of materials, about protecting the root protection of any of the trees, about ensuring a better or a better gain in environmental and ecological aspects, that we have the opportunity to um, ensure that that can happen if this application is approved. So as officers, we feel that that is why we are supporting it. Thank you. And as a senior officer, what, what would our legal viewpoint be on this? The legal certificate is, is a certificate that's been granted and that cannot be taken away from the applicant. He has consent to keep going. I share Councillor Yates's observations about well what's actually on site but that certificate has been granted and there was photographic evidence that was considered by the legal department at that time, I think it was 2012, that confirmed that a legal start had been made on site. That is why the certificate was granted. Okay, thanks Catherine. Um, Councillor Moon and then Councillor Watson. Um, thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll, I'll start by saying that I support refusal of this application and I understand completely what we're listening to, that we've got a live planning application, but as far as I'm concerned, we've got a legal start on site from 50 years ago. 50 years and it's a legal start. That's not a building. That is just absolutely not an existing building. We're eight years on from a lawful certificate and we've we've still got nothing there. For me, I want to address the consultee position because I respect what Councillor Flannery was saying and we've said it consistently in this committee that we've got to listen to the people who are experts in what they're doing. On this application, when you read through them, ecology tied by the fallback position. The Wildlife Trust object, the Forestry Commission object, and then they're tied by the fallback position. The Environment Agency object and they're holding that objection. The Environmental Health have got a list of conditions, the length of your arm for what they want for this application. As far as I'm concerned, when we look at our position, I wasn't sat here in 1971, but I'm sat here, <laughs> I'm sat here now. And I look at our current position with regards to the green belt and our current very special circumstances and our current exceptions. And I'm sorry, I do feel quite strongly on this one that 
that we don't fit any of those. I do not believe we fit very special circumstances. I do not believe that we fit an exception. Look at the list. The closest you could get was if we had a dwelling there and we were um, extending it or altering it or doing something different and it would be a smaller footprint. We don't have a building. The fact is we don't have a building. I respect we could have a building. They could build the building tomorrow, build it twice as big, build it 11 metres to the river, do what they want with that permission. Personally, I would appeal to the applicant on this to look at our current position, look at everything we know about our environment, everything we're being told about how we need to protect our environment. We have an ancient woodland there. It is such a precious thing. Why would you want to build a house in there, quite frankly? Why would you want to go against all of these policies and put a dwelling in that location? And to my mind, I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't here in the past to do anything about that, but I am sat here tonight and I do not have to give approval to a development in the green belt in a special biodiversity area in an ancient woodland i do not have to put my name to that chair um, and frankly i cannot satisfy myself that that i can push that button support it and say i'm comfortable that it that it's it's an exception and it's a special circumstance absolutely not chair so i will be very strongly opposing this application okay yeah, thanks for thanks councilman are there any TPOs on that ancient woodland? There are TPOs on the site. Uh, a lot of the trees have already been taken out because of uh, it, when we showed the photographs um, because of uh, the issues that have been raised in the past. Um, there's an opportunity to provide more trees going forward um, to address the, the issues that have been raised. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, Councillor Watson, then Councillor Adams. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's slightly different to the, to the other situation where uh, we will lose an appeal potentially on this one, as far as I can tell. The reason your officers are suggesting we support approval is to mitigate against uh, a much worse development um, uh, being built that's already pre-approved. So, as I say, we, my understanding is we won't be likely to lose an appeal if we did refuse this particular um uh, but planning uh, planning commission requests but but there's a very high risk of course that the original site will therefore be built on so the gamble is for the residents in particular and obviously for the site is that by refusing we could put something there that's that's much much worse um but as i say that doesn't mean we would lose an appeal like i suspect we would do in other cases where uh, statutory consultees are, are not uh, putting in objections. Is that is that I am correct in thinking that, am I? Yeah, thank you. I, I've not quite made my mind up yet. So, Councillor Adams, then Councillor Lomax. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, again, this is a quite a, a difficult uh, item, uh, as was the last one. Um, I've got a lot of sympathy uh, with the residents. Um, I understand the pragmatic view that the officers um, have taken. Um, I agree with Councillor Moon and I think most other members on, on the committee um, in terms of building on an ancient uh, woodland. Um, I don't agree with it, I don't like it, um, but the situation uh, in front of us is a difficult one because if we don't approve this application, which will provide um, a lot more stringent um, controlled over uh, uh, the area rather than um, the live application that's now uh, there, um, which is why I'm, I'm more tempted to support Councillor Flannery in his motion in terms of um, approving it, uh, but with a very uh, heavy heart. I think, can I just get clarity on the live application? So if this was refused, is there any way that the live application could be challenged or is, have, have, have we looked at that already? Yeah, the application couldn't be challenged because the certificate's been granted and it's a legal certificate. So providing he builds in accordance with those plans and the non-material amendment that's stated, um, he, that, that would be lawful. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Catherine. Um, I think on balance then for, for me, I, I, I would support um, approval, um, as I say, with a very heavy heart. 
Um, we're, we're backed into a corner here and I think uh, my personal opinion on this is that um, having more measures in place or more stringent controls uh, in the new application will will be better uh, for the environment, although um, I don't necessarily agree with the development um, uh, in, in that sense. Um, thanks, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Adams. Councillor Lomax. This is really, really difficult for me because this was, when I was growing up, part of my playground. Um, with it, and I was marched off the site at gunpoint before today from the owners for fishing in the flipping river. But times change. As far as I understand, yes, it is in an ancient woodland. No, we won't have to take any of the ancient woodland out. We have a legal certificate to say they can build there. Knowing the area, it is closer to the river where they intend to build, so it's slightly more prone. I would have thought to, to, to flooding, that is why they want to uh, move it back. Obviously, I've been contacted uh, by the residents um, with it who are definitely against it. Uh, what I am trying to weigh up in my own mind is, you know, if we go with localism and all that, do I go with them? And then once this new development comes along, there is no way of stopping it. Uh, and that is really, really uh, difficult for me. It is uh, a green passageway, but it is privately owned by the people who want to buy it. And should they, they want, there is no real footpath through it, there is a permissible path. They could shut it at any time uh, with it, which they may well do anyway once the house goes up. I, I don't know um, with that. So it is really, really difficult for me. There is a lot of wildlife in there. Uh, and to be honest, I don't know. I don't know. Um, with it. I wouldn't want to see a bigger development, but if I voted no against it, it could be that you're damned, is, is all I will say. And I'm trying to weigh that up in my own area. And as yet, I am still. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Lomax. I've got Councillor Yates, then Councillor Flannery. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, I agree with the officer we, we coming forward. It is a difficult one. But uh, when when we, we look at the at the situation where it is, this this house that, that got the planning commission and the lawful certificate uh, 1973 in um, 2015, you know, that, that's OK. It's, it's got a big house on it and everything else, but the real reason why they want to give up with that application so that they can move it to an higher level so it can be open that it's going to come off a floodplain. The floodplain will not go away, it will increase. We've got climate change, we do know that that is a designated floodplain. So if they build the bigger house on the, on the application site, which they can, I'd give it about two years before it's washed down into the River Ribble, because it wouldn't be it wouldn't be um, wouldn't be viable to to build an house on that piece of land. That is why it needs to be moved. And then when we look at at uh, our policies, and it says yes, we can have permitted development from that site, but if it's kept in its own boundary, well, yes, it is a big house, and he wants to make it smaller. Make it smaller in his own boundary. Don't look for another piece of land that's further away in ancient woodland with the green passageways that it's got. Councillor Moon explained it excellently that what, well, she's determined that she would not want to put a name to that. And, and I have to agree with her. Why should we say that something in 1973 
with a lawful certificate in 2015 is right for today's planning policies. I'd say no, we should refuse this application because it would be a new build. And if the applicant wants to go ahead and build one, a big house in floodplain, then let him do so. If he wants to come back to this committee and say later, after we've turned this one down, and later on and say, I would like to put my house on stilts, then we, we'd look at that application as it is in front of it on its own merit. But there is no way we can say that we would allow in this day of age to put a build a property on a floodplain. We're told that over and over again. I'd say I, I, I'm dead really pushing and asking the committee to consider this properly and well I know they will consider it properly that's wrong wording but to look at this deeply and just look at it it's just, it isn't a de development on its own right the, the first one that that stands there this one is a new build in in Greenbelt in a green corridor taking the other one out because even though it's got a lawful certificate would we pass that development now no i don't think we would so i would say we should refuse this application and let the the, de the uh, developer if you so wish build in the floodplain because that's what he's got planning permission to do mr chairman councillor flannery <laughs> thanks chair thanks for letting me back in again yeah, I just feel like I need to just clear a few things up for the residents because you are the key people here because you've got to live with this. Let, let's just make this clear. If this did, site didn't have a lawful development certificate, I'm telling you now 100% unanimously this would be getting thrown out. Wouldn't it be considered? But the reality is it does have that. And our role is to be objective here. And our, my colleagues around the table, they, they've mentioned things and very valid things, but it's not a personal decision. There's a lawful certificate which says, and I'm thinking of the better of two evils, if you approve, if we, if we, if we throw this out, and we don't approve it, you could end up with something you've got no control of, which is bigger in mass, and they could carry on and do what they needed to do. What's happened here is, the better of the two evils is, if we approve it, which it is policy compliant, you'll end up with something a bit more simple. It's a bit more sympathetic to maybe the environment of the area, but ultimately you, we cannot stop a development in this area. So I just thought it was important that you understood that as well as, as what we're becoming from. So we are trying to support you in the best way we can. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Flannery. Uh, I'll allow um, Councillor Moon just as, as long as it is very quick, because I've got Councillor Watson, Councillor Smith and Councillor Green wishing to speak. OK, Councillor Watson. Thank you, Chair. Um, the, clearly, we are taking a risk here, and I'm, I'm assuming, based on what the residents have said, they are wanting us to take the risk that they will build on this other site, um, and that basically are hoping that the fact that it is closer to the river means it's unlikely they will probably do so. Um, as a consequence, uh, I'm seeing nods and so on, so I believe I'd, I'd want to go with the residents in something like this. And uh, as Councillor Flannery has, has said and, and proven many times, he's very, very keen to go with the residents. I don't dispute that. That's what he's trying to do here is to help them either. Um, however, I think on the balance, I'd probably be willing to take that risk as well. And I just wouldn't, as Councillor Moon has said, want to put my name against something like this as a precedent, but not as precedent, that's the wrong word, um, as a, an indication of just how strongly I would oppose something like this as a norm, as I'm sure we all would. Um, anyway, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Watson. Yeah, it's, we've been dealt what I call a pig in a pork. We're damned if we do, damned if we don't. I'm sorry for that harsh language, but just the way it is, we have to come to a decision tonight. If we refuse and he builds a massive property there, so be it. But because he's got the, he, he has got consent. And all his, so, Councillor Smith. 
Yeah, that, thank you, Chair. I, I think we all realise that and we all understand that uh, uh, as, uh, uh, as councillors. We've all read this report and I've said before, I've read it half a dozen times, and it doesn't get any better with reading. Um, I, for one, am prepared to take that risk. Um, OK, I won't suffer with it. Yes, I will suffer with it, actually. But um, I'm, I'm assuming the, the residents, and it's already been um, <coughs> just uh, outlined by Councillor Watson, uh, that um, they understand that risk as well. That they'll have read the report. They've come here to speak against it and say, don't, don't allow it to go ahead. Uh, now, now, that is the risk that, that they will have to take and we will have to take as a council. Um, as Council 8 said, there's a very good reason that that house hasn't been built where it is on the riverbank. Um, I've been down there, I've seen it, I walked around it a couple of times, um, and there is a very good reason that it's not being built. Um, I, for one, I, I stick with what I say. I'm, I'm, I think we should vote against this. Uh, two, two wrongs don't make a right, and all, all the rest of the, the cliches that we can we can speak about, just because somebody made a, a decision in 1970 and 71. Um, if it went to that same committee now, with the different rules and regulations that we have, they wouldn't pass it. And, you know, it's been said quite clearly this evening, that if this came to our committee on its own, as an individual application, we wouldn't pass it. Um, we wouldn't. It's quite clear we wouldn't. Uh, and, you know, in all honesty, I, I am not going to put my name to that. I, I couldn't I couldn't do so. I think the environmental um, impact of it is, is so great. Um, and I think um, I probably will take it a little bit further. And it's been said that we can't uh, we can't remove this. Well, has, has a court said that we can't remove it? And that's the only way of t telling is actually get it into a court and find out whether we can remove it on all the issues that we're talking about. And these are not just planning issues. These are completely environmental and flooding issues that go along with it. So I'd be tempted to, to take it a step further uh, at some stage. Chair, thank you. No, it's my understanding. They've got a legal certificate and a legal certificate is actually produced by a court of the land. Uh, Councillor Mrs Green. Yeah, just a, qu a couple of quick points actually, because that everybody said really what I was going to say anyway. But there's just two points. Firstly, on Greenbelt, we're allowed to build only if it's on an existing footprint. Well, this isn't being intended being built on an existing footprint, so it shouldn't be allowed in Greenbelt. Secondly, if if it was passed in, you say 1971, 72, was it? That's prior to South Ribble being in existence. South Ribble didn't become existent till 1974. So an authority passed it then that basically doesn't exist anymore. Um, so are we bound to follow that when we're a different authority? Just a thought. Catherine, you can come in, yeah. Uh, yeah thank, thank you, uh, Councillor Green. Um, it says at 4.1, outline plan and permission was granted by Preston Rural District Council and a subsequent reserve matters application. But for the purpose of this application, I don't think it doesn't have any relevance who approved that. They've got a legal certificate that says they can build a dwelling and that, that's how it stands. It, it's a legal certificate granted by South Ribble. So we've granted that legal certificate that enables them to build that property. Do you mean start to build it? To carry on building it. Right, okay. Councillor Adams. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I think um, for me, just, just to confirm, um, the biggest thing here is trying to reduce the impact on the environment. And for me, personally, I don't think there's any any uh, use in me refusing this and talking about the environment. And then we all know that it's very possible that a, a bigger dwelling could actually be built and have a, a de even a, more, a greater detrimental effect on the environment. For me, as I say, with a heavy heart, I would second the proposal for approval on the basis of trying to reduce the the impact on the environment as much as possible. Um, I think as everyone has said, if the live application wasn't there, this wouldn't even be a conversation, I don't think. But 
we have to abide by the law of the land. And for me, we need to try and reduce the environment, the impact on the environment. And that is why uh, I will second approval. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Adams. Councillor Hancock, and then we're going to, um, I'm going to make a decision then. Councillor Hancock. Thank you, Chair. We've just been told by our officers that there's a legal certificate to build here. If we refuse this and the bill goes ahead, who knows what's going to be there? It could be a monstrosity. If we do uh, accept uh, our officers' recommendations, then at least we have uh, a, a legal consent over what can be built and conditions can be put on uh, to satisfy that. Thank you, Chair. OK, Councillor Hancock, thanks very much for that. Right, um, the first proposal we had on this this evening was Councillor Yates's, Councillor Smith's proposal to refuse, seconded by Councillor Yates. We then had an amendment by Councillor Flannery to approve to stop a monstrosity being built and it's been seconded by Councillor Adams. So we're going to have a vote on the amendment for approval. And I'll do it in alphabetical order. Councillor Adams. Four. Councillor Donoghue. Uh, four, Chair. Councillor Flannery. Four. Councillor Mary Green. Against. Councillor Harry Hancock. Four. Councillor John Hesketh. Yes. Councillor Chris Lomax. You can abstain if you want to. I, I, I just feel I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Oh, you are. I'm going to abstain. Okay, thank you. Caroline Moon. Sorry, Councillor Caroline Moon. I'm against, Chair. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Phil Smith. Against. Councillor. Gareth Watson. Against. Councillor Barry Yates. And I am for. Alex, can you read the vote, please? Hey, Chair. Six members uh, voted against and five members voted for. So the motion is lost to approve uh, the application. Okay, so we now move on to refusal. Councillor Adams. Against. Councillor Donoghue. Against. Councillor Flannery. Against. Councillor Mary Green. For. Councillor Harry Hancock. Against. Councillor John Hesketh. Okay. Councillor Chris Lomax. Abstaining, I'm sorry. Councillor Caroline Moon. Sorry, Chair, can I just have clarity? You're now voting. You're now taking the vote for... Taking a vote for refusal. For refusal. Yes. Right, yes, then I'm for. Councillor Phil Smith. Uh, for. Councillor Gareth Watson. For, Chair. Councillor Barry Yates. For. I am against, and, but once again... Yeah, I think there might be some confusion there. Well, right, we vote, we, right, we voted first on the amendment, which was for approval, and the amendment fell. So we're now voting on motion for refusal. So, Councillor Hesketh, you're for refusal, okay? Where did I get up, where did I get up to then, me? <laughs> yeah. um, all right, Alex, if you can give us. Sorry, I, I do apologise. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I do apologise. I got a bit lost there with the votes, and obviously, some members appear to be confused as to what they're voting for. Is it possible we could just take the, the vote again? Certainly, right. With this vote, we've had the, the we've had the vote on the amendment that fell. This vote is for refusal. What say you, Councillor Adams? Against. Councillor Donoghue? Against. Councillor Flannery? Against. Councillor Mary Green? For. Councillor Harry Hancock? Against. Councillor John Hesketh? For. Councillor Chris Lomax? Against. 
Councillor Caroline Moon. Four. Councillor Phil Smith. Four. Councillor Gareth Watson. Four. Councillor Barry Yates. Four. And I am also against. Alex, can you confirm the outcome of the vote, please? Uh, the vote is tied, uh, Chair. Six members voted for refusal, six voted against. But as Chair, you have a casting vote. So therefore, uh, the motion to refuse the uh, permission is not... I, I, I've made my point. You've made my point clear, uh, my case clear. Um, I am against refusal. So therefore, the uh, motion to refuse the application has not been carried. It has, has been lost. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. So that's the end of item seven on tonight's agenda. Item number eight is land south of Hampshire Road, Walton Liddell. Councillor Moon. Sorry, Chair, I think just for clarity, because there's people obviously watching this from home, can you just be clear on what's happened there? Because we've had one motion that didn't get carried, one motion that then tied, and you've got a casting vote. So can you just, one of you, please very clearly say in this room now whether that has just been accepted as an acceptable development in that area? Let's just be clear on what's happened, because we're not in no man's land, are we? No. Technically, we're in no man's land. One falls, the other falls. Where are we legally? Well, the application is in a state of non-determination because no decision has been made either way. So then, the so vote, then what? It I, would have fallen if the you want to go for another vote. That that is uh, despicable. It's true. Are we clear now, Caroline, uh, Councillor Moon? Oh, are you clear now? I, I, I'm clear that we've got a non-determination because we had a second vote on a vote that we already voted on, Chair. Mm. But I'd like to know the legal position for the sake of the residents, for the sake of the people watching from home, what happens now? I think it would be helpful to just understand that, what the happens now. The application, it's my understanding that the application, the recommendation of the officer for approval has just passed. No? What you've just passed, what you've just passed is that we've not agreed to be against it. So we're not for it and we're not against it. We're in no man's land. So we're in no man's land. I then, think yeah. I'm not a solicitor. That's why I'm asking. Well, I'm not a solicitor. So I'm asking for clarity. Alex please. is the legal services team leader. So he should be able to point us in the right direction. I'm not, I'm not a legal brainiac. There was an application to approve, uh, sorry, there was a vote to approve the application and that vote was lost and there's an application to refuse. And again, uh, that vote was lost. So the application is in a state of non-determination. Uh, there are, of course, rights for an applicant to uh, appeal against non-determination if the application has not been determined by a particular date. And that is an avenue that is open to the applicant or it's possible that the application may be brought back to committee if um, no appeal has been made, perhaps with other information, or even if an appeal is lodged, it's possible for the application to be brought back for the committee, for the committee to determine what it would be minded to do if the application had not been taken out of its hands by virtue of an appeal. Okay. So it's neither been approved nor refused. Yeah. Okay. Anybody who came for... Uh, the vineyard application that that is now over and um, if you could leave through this exit thank you yes okay if we can have five minutes ladies and gentlemen please and set your stopwatches for midnight
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll move on to item eight on tonight's agenda. Less of the joviality, please. Uh, land south of Hampshire Road, Walton Liddell. Um, Debbie, if you'd like to um, do this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Hang on. There we go. Um, right, the Hampshire Road site is in Walton Dale. It's 1.4 hectares, fairly flat site to the centre of the Holland House residential estate. To the north, the two storey dwellings across Hampshire Road. There is residential also present in the west on Odell Way and to the south on Honeywood Avenue. Um, the southern properties are screened by mature trees and shrubbery. To the east is Holland House Pitches Recreation Ground and public rights away skirt the eastern, northern and western boundaries. There are no TPO, it's tree protection orders on or around the site and it's flood zone one, so it's least likely to flood. The site was originally allocated for provision of a school, but this and the site on Walton Park are no longer needed. During preparation of the latest local plan, this, it was redesignated as green infrastructure and the Education Authority have confirmed that it's still not needed and the financial contribution towards school places isn't required. OK, the proposal is for 48 dwellings and associated works. Slides a bit faint, I'm sorry. That includes a policy compliance offer of 14 affordable units. Now they'd be secured by Section 106 agreement. The access is proposed from two five and a half metre wide access points on Hampshire Road. They connect through the site centre and there are small cul-de-sacs on either side. The estate, estate roads are before 0.8 metres wide and they would have two metre service strips and pavements all the way around. Seven properties would access directly onto Hampshire Road and that replicates the layout typically found along Hampshire Road. There are no highways objections on this one. Um, there would be 16 complementary house types, two and three storey, two to four bed in detached, semi and terraced. The modern design, which respects the wider area, um, Holland House is relatively new development, 20, 30 years or so, and we've got a, an appropriate materials palette that's been provided and approved. Parking and garden space reflect the adjacent to and is to adopted standards, and there is through site and frontage landscape. I've not shown you the landscape drawing, but there is quite a, a decent landscape scheme for this one. Acoustic fencing would be along the eastern edge next to the playing field. It's a density of about 38 dwellings per hectare. That's slightly higher than the borough's average, but it's very similar to the adjacent estate development density. And being mindful of the MPPF requirement to make effective use of land and to, to develop at higher densities, this scheme is acceptable in density terms. Okay, just some examples of the proposed house types. As I said earlier, the complementary house types. This is the site on the left view from Hampshire Road. The access points will be from this, this part. And site viewed from Honeywood Avenue. This shrubbery will be retained and the site is over the, over the top of the shrubbery. The view from the adjacent playground on the eastern side. This is the site here. And the view from the same side, which shows the relationship with the playground. So we've got the proposal site here. And finally, the site view from the public right away along adjacent to Odell Way. This is the view from the same public right away onto Hampshire Road. So these are existing properties and the access is for the main site and for the seven individual properties will be along this frontage. It's a natural extension to a, an extensive residential development area. We've had 16 letters of representation, 13 in objection, two with neutral comments and one from Holland House Residents Association, which includes 14 signatures. Separately, and in fairness, I, I think we need to mention this, that we've had a petition also by the, from the Residents Association with 215 printed names. 
There are no signatures. There are just no comments. They're just names. And the document's titled Objection to Building on Holland House Wasteland. Because it is a typed document without signatures or comments, we can't verify that this is actually a petition. Um, it includes names from all over the world, 18 from Bamber Bridge and Waltley Dale, 33 from Europe, 21 from other parts of the world, including Russia and the States, and 143 from the UK, some that profess to be from Preston. But I think we can safely say that the majority of people on this so on this petition won't be affected by the development. We've got no statutory objections and we will move approval with conditions. Thank you, Chair. OK, uh, thanks for your presentation, Debbie. The um, petition sounds rather interesting. Uh, right, I don't have any registered objectors on this, um, unless we've got mem any member of the public wishes to come and speak against the application. No, OK, we have John Matthews, the agent. You just come to the, yeah, um, OK, if you can introduce yourself, I, you've got four minutes to make your presentation. Good evening, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Matthews, the design manager for Eccleston Homes. Thank you for the opportunity to address you in relation to this application. Your officer's report clearly explains the nature of the application and the issues to be considered as part of, this, of, as part of your decision, including the weight to be given to the various petitions. Eccleston Homes have sought to work with your officers throughout and consider we have responded positively to requests for additional information and amendments to the scheme. As a result, we will simply ask that you take the following points into account when making your decision. This full planning application has the same number of dwellings and a similar layout to that approved in 2014. Those approvals were granted at a time when the council were proposing the site for a green infrastructure allocation. Considerable weight should be given to the reuse of this land, which is an obvious and sustainable extension to an existing housing development. The application site is within private ownership, currently fenced off with no public rights over the land. The site is also immediately adjacent to children's play area and sports playing pitch and within the accessibility catchment area of Central Park. It has also been demonstrated that the proposed development would not affect the amenity value and the nature conservation value of the site due to the site and its existing form not being of high amenity value. <laughs> Council officers are of that opinion that these factors in combination satisfy the requirements of policy G7. There are no technical objections to the development and the amended layout agreed with your officers will accord with all relevant council policies, including the provision of affordable housing. As stated in the report, the proposed, the proposed development is not considered to have an undue impact on the immunity of the existing properties or an impact on the character and appearance of the area. Your officers have carefully considered the impact of developing this private overgrown and disused site and strongly believe the proposal would accord with both national and local planning policies. I would therefore ask that you support the recommendation of your officers and resolve that you are minded to approve the application subject to the signing of the Section 106 agreement. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Mr Matthews, for your presentation. OK, uh, the Ward Councillor has left, has dropped out of the team's meeting, so she won't be speaking. Uh, Councillor, uh, I'm coming into committee straight away, Councillor Hesketh. Thank you, Mr Chairman. This site uh, was put forward a number of years ago for development and Lancashire County Council at that point uh, decided that a section should be reserved for a school, which is in the report. This does not appear to be uh, necessary now. So now this tonight has given us the opportunity to extend the area to housing, inclu which includes 14 uh, affordable ones, 
uh, this then would complete the site uh, and it would be a very, very good site. Uh, it does go within the uh, accordance of uh, South Ribble Local Plan, Mr Chairman, and I think we should uh, recommend approval, and I do so. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Hesketh. I've got Councillor Flannery, Councillor Lomax, Councillor Yates. Councillor Flannery. Thanks, Chair. Very quickly, I want to second approval. And it's good to see the affordable quotas in there. And it looks like the landscaping is good as well. So, thank you. Councillor Lomax. Just to say, this one's far easier uh, for me. I have spoken to people on Hampshire Road directly opposite the uh, new, new development uh, over the years, and they've been asking, when is it going to be developed? Because we're sick, sick of stones coming out of the bushes. I can't sleep. <laughs> right, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, it, it would have been nice to have this as a, a green open space, but it has been there for development for a long time. Uh, I'm happy to see that the public footpath that was dark and dangerous for the children going to school early hours in the morning will now be lit. So uh, I am happy with the application of all. Thank you. So I've got a Councillor Smith. Yeah, just can make a, a point about the vagaries of planning. We spend two hours talking about one application. We're going to spend five minutes talking about an application for 48 houses. Um, that's just the way it goes. Um, good application, Chair. I'll be voting for it. Thank you. Do we have, right, so we've had a proposal a second. Uh, do we have any other, have, have we got any other proposals? No. Is anyone in disagreement? Can I take this as a block vote? Yeah, all right, we'll take this as a block vote for approval. Thank you very much, Debbie. Okay, moving swiftly on to item number nine. If you're not here for item number nine, you are free to leave. Are you, no, are you in a rush, Chris Salvey? No, no. Uh, is anybody else? <laughs> um, yeah. All right, item number nine, uh, because Chris is in such a rush. Um, Turbury House Nursery Chain House Lane. This has been before us in the past and it's been resubmitted. Thanks, Chris. No problem. Uh, committee will recall that they deferred this application in June to seek the removal or reduction of caravan pitches within this section of the site. Uh, this was as a result of approximately 50% of the proposed pitches being on agricultural land as indicated in the yellow dots. Amended plans have been provided which reduces the caravan pitch area by 41%, resulting in a 0.36 hectare parcel of land being reinstated as greenfield. Additional fencing and planting is proposed to the boundary uh, with the nil use field. And 48 of the proposed car parking spaces are now also proposed to be formed from grass creek. You can see the line down here and there's some across here. So I'll just flip between these two slides just quickly again. So this is the previous one. Uh, this was the entirety of the caravan pitch area. And as you can see on the new one, it's been reduced and this area here it's now uh, green field. This has re uh, resulted in a reduction um, from 26 to 20 uh, caravan pitches. Um, however, six of these are now smaller pitches, whereas previously all 26 were larger. Additional slides showing aerial photographs of the site can be displayed if the committee or members of the public wish to refer to them. Uh, but for the reasons contained in the report, the application is recommended for approval subject to the imposition of conditions. So thank you, Chair.
That's all. Thank you, Chair. Good grief. <laughs> right, sorry about that, Chris. You, you did that a lot faster than I thought. Like we said, two hours on one property and here we are. Right, so we have two members of the public who wish to speak against this revised plan. Uh, do we have Leslie Keller, please? Hello, everybody. Hello again. Um, it's quite nice to be back. I'll keep this short and sweet because I'm mindful that you've been here a long time and that many of you may not have had your dinner. Feels like it's past my bedtime as well. <laughs> really tired. Um, listen, since the last planning committee, you remember I I ended my last um, talk here saying that um, we wanted to approve this application. We wanted to work with the applicant. And I'm really pleased to say that we've we've met with Mr. Paul Kenwithy and with Daniel Hughes, his um, planner. Um, we had a, Chris and I went along. We had a, a good conversation with them. And as a result, we're really pleased to see that the touring caravan part of the application has been amended. There's now 0.36, I think it's acres, not hectares, Chris, 0.36 acres um, that's that's been put, put back to Greenfield as part of the recreation zone of the touring caravan site. We're really pleased about that because it moves the touring caravan site further away from our residential boundary. And um, we're grateful to the applicant for, for putting that in place. Um, the, the, there is just one concern um, that I, I have as a, as, a, as a niggle, and it's just um, part of who I am. And I'm just one of those people who likes to do the right thing and to see the right thing done. And my, my remaining niggle is that um, the wider application, the amount of land which is um, currently agricultural, which is where the um, caravan storage is proposed to sit. It's a large central area. It is agricultural. If this application is passed, it will be turned into B8 in industrial use. And the three fields on the eastern side are currently nil use and they'll be turned into car parking and recreation. So for me, in thinking about integrity, doing the right thing, um, I feel it's out of my hands now, um, but I think this represents um, a permanent change to our green belt. Um, it represents a shrinking of the green belt. I wish, hand on heart, that uh, Mr. Kenwith had gone a little bit further um, in that respect. I get the feeling that this application is gonna be approved tonight. But I would just appeal to you to, you know, your your custodians of the green belt, and um, would you just think really carefully? This is a permanent decision, and um, whilst I say, like, whilst we want to support it, that's my one final niggle. Um, if if it is passed, uh, I've spoken with with Chris about a, a, a possible um, condition um, added to condition twenty nine, and this is to request that there's um, a phasing of the development agreed if it is approved so that the um, the applicant can have a, in, in place a schedule of works, if you like. And this would just mean that um, the area closest to residents wouldn't be um, used um, in, in a sort of noisy way or a holding way for, for the 18 months it's gonna take for this plan to come to fruition. So that's me, thank you. Okay, thanks, Leslie. Uh, Chris, would you like to respond to that? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Firstly, apologies. Uh, yes, Leslie was correct. It is acres, not hectares, 0.36. Um, the application, it's, it's as I said previously, uh, previous times she's brought to planning committee, there's a number of um, components here and the site needs to be considered as one mixed use development rather than looking at each that, that, that aspects agricultural that's turned into this you need to look at the, the site as a whole and assess the impact as a whole um, the two fields to the east which are proposed to be recreation uses they are appropriate forms of development in a green, green belt and in regards to 
the additional suggested condition um, by the neighbours for phase and development, um, I would probably suggest it's worthwhile getting the view of the applicant's agent just to see if such a condition would be workable because there's a number of um, components happening and whether or not a condition where you could phase one part before the other just to see if that's workable from the agent's perspective. So thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks, Chris. Um, do we have Neil Worth? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and councillors. I have a lot more to add to what I said at the last planning meeting. But what I am going to say is quite relevant. My main objection to this development is that it's on Greenbelt land that's uh, been farmed for centuries. Where do we stop? Where do we stop developing land? When all the green belts gone, do we keep looking at bricks and mortar? You know? If this council is minded to do away with more green belt and pass this development, then there must be stringent controls put on the operation of it. Will there be somebody on permanent site looking after these animals? I don't think so, because there's nobody there now. Alpacas, I don't mind. I don't object to alpacas or horses. I do object to mini tanks, mini jeeps, bazooka balls and laser clay shooting. Consider the noise pollution on my house, or my amenity as you like to call it, being 150 yards away from this potential noise. The main objectors are people bordering onto the site. I don't know where people in favour of it live, but there are not 20 houses, 28 houses bordering onto the site who are, are people supposedly in favour of it. There's only, actually on my end of the development, there's only Mark House and his wife and myself that actually border onto the bottom end of the Packers, alpaca place. Anybody else that's going to have to enjoy this so-called pleasure farm will have to travel from it. And they can say, well, yes, okay, it's something new. It's something we need in, 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 in Farrington and Whitestake. But we don't. We don't need it because there's plenty of places where you go and to enjoy life. There's plenty of parks. There's plenty of playing areas for children. So, leave it as it is, leave it as green belt. Otherwise, what is the point of having green belt? There's no point, is there? You might as well develop the whole lot, you know, and then we look at bricks and mortars for the rest of our lives. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Worth. Uh, I have two members of the public who wish to speak in favour of the application, do I have a James Harrison? <clears throat> Chair, members of the planning committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm speaking on behalf of the applicant for this application and want to take this opportunity to highlight some points in support of the proposal and specifically address some of the points raised in the initial planning committee. Mr. Kenworthy is on holiday this week and is therefore unable to speak. My name is James Harrison. I've been a close friend with the Kenworthy family for many years. I'm familiar with the existing site and the proposed plan, and I feel the proposed plan can only be a positive for the site and the local area. As you'll be aware, historically, the site has operated as an agricultural nursery, growing and storing seedlings and plants. However, over time, this has evolved. This has included over the years, the inclusion of the fishery and the birds of prey center. It has also included a storage of caravans alongside open storage associated with various businesses. The open storage predominantly started as the owner sought to try and retain income in the land, having owned it since 1970, as the agricultural profit began to fall. The applicant's business at the time involved in landscaping alongside maintenance of gardens. More recently, it has evolved to solely maintenance with the remaining landscaping material stored on site, 
it is intended the landscaping material will be used in the development if planning permission is granted. From your site visit, you will notice other storage items have taken place over the years. This has occurred from approach to some local businesses seeking, to spare, uh, seeking space for their goods and consequently provided supplementary income to the owners as agricultural side of the business became less profitable. The matters were discussed with the council in 2018 through their pre-application process. It was their suggestion to apply for a lawful development certificate during that meeting. And it is the decision that has led the applicant to the proposal in front of you today. Turn to other matters identified in the previous planning committee. From the case officers update, you'll be aware a meeting has recently took place with the local residents to try and address some of the concerns raised. A meeting had been offered historically prior to the planning committee. However, at the time, local residents were unsure whether this was allowed with the planning application. At the meeting, a series of matters were discussed. This included the location of the touring park, reducing the number of tourists and other matters such as landscaping and boundary treatment on the site. Subsequently, as summarised by the officer, a set of changes have taken place to seek to respond to the issues that are the best possible, while simultaneously ensuring a viable scheme comes forward. The planning agent has also provided a set of very special circumstances for the determination of the touring park if required. The resulting scheme confirms a further reduction of hard standing across the site in line with the site plan at the first committee, along with confirming ecological enhancements can be secured as a part of the planning condition requested by the council's ecological advisors. In terms of the existing trees alongside the southern boundary of the site between the petting zoo and the properties of Chain House Lay, it has been confirmed with the landowners that these will either be removed or pruned. No approach was made initially with the landowners rightly or wrongly on the assumption they would prefer these trees to be retained given the proposal. However, it is clear they prefer some work to be undertaken. Although not a planning requirement, the applicant is happy to undertake this and will take place with or without permission, uh, planning permission. Additionally, additionally, landscaping and fencing will also be included in this location to be discussed with the nearby residents should planning permission be approved in order to discharge the relevant planning condition. Finally, in relation to a couple of other minor points raised at the committee, the access road has recently resurfaced following a recent decision by a neighbouring landowner to close the previous entrance. Historical aerial photos illustrating the hard standing along the access have been provided to the council in previous discussions, along with the land titles confirming the access as indicated on the site plan is a legal lawful access of the site. Removal of the trees, sorry, removal of the trees in this section were also flagged by the objectors at the previous planning committee. However, whilst this does not require planning permission in itself, the tree removal took place before the road resurfacing by Electricity Northwest, who were undertaking work on the power lines at the time. Taking all this into account, we are pleased again to be at the planning committee with recommendation for approval and would therefore urge members to accept the recommendation. Thank you for your time. Uh, thanks for your presentation, Mr. Harrison. Uh, Rachel Lidget, please. Members of the Planning Committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I am speaking on behalf of the Turbury Woods Owl Sanctuary and specifically the manager, Andrew Billsborough, who is unable to attend tonight. I wanted to take this opportunity to highlight some points in support of the proposal, which Turbury Wood Owl Sanctuary are in full support of. My name is Rachel Lidgett. I have volunteered at the Owl Sanctuary in the past and have also previously been employed by the applicant at Turbury House Nursery. The sanctuary have been tenants of the applicant since 2005 and during this time the sanctuary has been able to develop and grow through the assistance of our landlord and applicant to this application. During this time we have rebuilt the old aviaries and opened up the small woodland to our visitors. This has allowed the sanctuary to continue to improve the work they do in relation to birds of prey rescue and also allowed it to become the number to attraction out of 560 venues on TripAdvisor for the whole of Lancashire. The sanctuary attracts visitors from all over the Northwest and even the whole of England, in including international visitors. This revenue allows us to continue to develop the good work the sanctuary does and ensures it has a long-term sustainable future. The proposal will directly and indirectly help to continue to support us as a charity increasing visitor numbers and potentially allowing us to rebuild and recreate new features in our woodland. The proposed uses and additional visitor, sorry, the proposed uses and additional visitors to the site will complement each other, encouraging further people to visit our owl sanctuary and help to encourage a good footfall for the charity. 
given our position as a recognised tourist attraction in the North West and specifically in South Ribble. The uses will help cement this creating an important economic asset to the area, along with delivering environmental and social benefits. In particular, educational opportunities not available at this level in the nearby areas. The proposed reorientation of the site will remove the existing uses of greater impact in relation to amenity away from the sanctuary, which will indirectly help our business appear more appealing to visitors. And secondly, provide additional benefits to the welfare of the birds that are kept on site. Finally, when viewing the proposals as a whole, the reduction in built form and hard standing, along with the ecological enhancements identified in the planning report and secured by proposed condition, will be of benefits to the Owl Sanctuary, specific site and wider area in relation to the environmental benefits of the proposal. In this respect, the plans will not ecologically affect any of our birds in any way regarding noise or the traffic associated with the proposal. Taking this into account, the Owl Sanctuary fully support the proposals, particularly the benefits it will bring ecologically and econ economically to the sanctuary. Wider site and borough, we therefore urge the committee to support the proposal. Thank you for your time. What a great presentation. Right, um, we have the ward councillor, Mrs Margaret Smith. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, good evening, even though it is, uh, we've been here a long time, but uh, nevertheless, I say good evening to you all. Uh, first of all, Mr Chairman, um, I would like to... Sorry? Count Councillor Smith, if you should just get closer to the mic. Sorry. Thank you. Is that better? Um, first of all, Mr Chairman, I'd like to thank the committee uh, for me um, the deferral from June. I think it has been of great benefit uh, to not only the residents but also to the applicant that we could actually go again and visit the site. I went with the residents to, to visit the site and we had another walk around it and he was very helpful in as much as he explained exactly how the differences um, they were proposing would be coming back to planning tonight. And I think the area that has been reorganised that um, is next to the nil use field will complement that uh, and make a tremendous difference uh, to the residents on Newgate Lane. I think I um, also have to say a great thank you to the residents because they have worked exceptionally hard uh, to get it to this stage. Um, Obviously, it has been quite a big proposal for them to come to them, um, but they have worked it through. Um, and as um, Leslie, the resident, has said, they are not against the development. They are not against people earning a living there. They want it to succeed, but they want it also to be right for everyone. So I think a great thank you to them for the work that they have done. I think also at this stage, um, I'm not... 100% happy with the uh, amount of touring caravans that are still going on there. Uh, they are still within the green belt, but I get to the stage of thinking that there is obviously going to have to be a trade-off for what we're going to try to achieve uh, on the overall site. Because if you go to the site, and I know that the majority of the planning committee have been to the site, we do realise that the site itself is in desperate need of redevelopment and of a great deal of attention as is going to be required to get it to a state where it is um, in a suitable state uh, for what it is required to do. I think the other thing that would I would like to see is that um, at the stage, if it is approved this evening, uh, there is a tremendous amount of work to be done in various um, areas of the site. And I would like to think that our uh, planning um, officers and, if necessary, enforcement officers would monitor all the conditions. There are 29 conditions to this planning application. Some of them obviously not quite as restrictive as others, but I do think some of them need to be controlled and make sure that they are looked uh, to um, uphold the conditions that will be necessary to make this uh, whole site work. And just before I finish, could I 
give a big thank you to our planning officers because I know that they have, Chris and Stephen, have worked tremendously hard on this. It has been a very long drawn out procedure and it's been back and forth and back and forth, but they have done their very best to accommodate us all by taking us around the site, uh, showing them showing us how it is going to be developed. And I think that has been very, very helpful to us all. So all in all, Mr Chairman, while um, there are things that obviously we would still like to tweak, I think overall we are uh, going down the situation where it is a great improvement in what is there at this moment in time. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, uh, thank you, Councillor Smith. I agree with you. I think the our planning officer to do a, a fantastic job under sometimes extremely stressful conditions. Councillor Michael Green, as the neighbouring ward councillor. Thank you, Chairman. Good evening, colleagues. Um, I won't, uh, won't take up too much of your time. I realise it's been a long, a long meeting, a very, a very interesting meeting, actually, um, from a planning perspective. Um, I did speak, Chairman, at the committee meeting at the beginning of June, um, so I won't repeat what I said then, but I, I do still have some concerns over the impact upon the green belt, as has been highlighted by one of the residents this evening, and on some of the proposed uses for this site. Um, having said that, though, I do welcome the discussions that have taken place since that meeting, and I, and I think the decision of the committee on that night permitted those discussions to take place, and I think they, those have borne some fruit. Um, I welcome the reduction in the number of caravan sites from 26 to 20, but rather like Councillor Mrs Smith um, would have liked it to go a little further, and as I'm sure the committee would have done as well. In fact, I can ask the committee to consider that this evening, whether it should be a fair, slight further reduction below that figure. Um, clearly, this is a site where we want to see something happen on the site. We, we welcome um, some of the economic development perspective, um, but it's whether it, it fits in with the area. And I think that has been the concern for, for a number of the residents moving forward. But if the committee does decide to ultimately approve this application tonight, the consent and the conditions attached to it will, will offer some certainty um, regarding the use of the land moving forward. Uh, and I trust that in due course, if this is approved and, and if these uses do come forward, I trust that the council will fully enforce um, any conditions and ensure that that enforcement takes place on a swift basis uh, to make sure that um, whatever happens in this location is appropriate uh, for the rural nature of the area. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Green. I think, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the reduction in the number of vans is, is a welcome, welcoming thing, but any further reduction, it would not have been financially viable so that's that's why they've gone down to. I've got the agent first, Councillor Hesketh. Sorry. I've got your name down. I've already got your name down. Uh, the agent doesn't want to speak, but can I can I ask about the condition? You, Chair. It, it, it's best the agent answers whether or not such a, a such, such a phase and condition would work for them. Um, there's no point imposing a condition which wouldn't work for the development. So through you. Okay, I'll bring it into committee now, Councillor Hesketh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we put our, our concerns forward at, at a previous meeting, as we all know. And uh, some of the things that uh, we put forward for consideration have been taken on hand. Not all of them. It may not be perfect, the, um, the uh, conditions that we've put on and, and, the, and the decisions we've had between the two parties. But if we pass it this evening, it will give us opportunity to regularise regularize the site. It will give us more control over the way that it operates and uh, I think that in in that, that for those those reasons Mr Chairman I think we should support it as a local business and I recommend approval as I say I think it would give us much more control and uh, tidy the side to up probably thank you okay thanks for that councillor Hesketh council will Adam thank you chair yeah I think um First of all, thank you to the officers for this. I know a lot of work has gone into it. They've worked very well with um, residents on this. 
Um, I think this is a success story of this committee, actually, without blowing our own trumpet, because of, you know, we've, we've asked the applicant to go away um, and meet with residents and try to mitigate the concerns that were raised. Um, it sounds like that has been done, um, although the residents still have a few other issues. I, I'm quite happy in terms of uh, the process which has gone on uh, to date, and I'm, I think I'd thank the applicant um, for working with uh, residents on this because it doesn't have to do that, um, but it's good that they have. Um, so I will be quite happy in terms of um, seconding approval uh, because it will provide more protections to the site um, than what is currently in place, and that's important. Uh, and I also think that it would be um, quite exciting for the residents of South Ribble to have such um, uh, a place to, to, to visit. Um, and I think that's something that we should support as well, particularly on the back of the last 12, 18 months uh, and the way that businesses have struggled. So uh, very happy to second approval. Thank you, Chair. OK, Councillor Adams, thanks very much, very much for that. Um, just before I bring Councillor Smith in, did you know that owls sleep lying down? <laughs> Is that correct, Rachel? Councillor Smith. I think they also sleep with their eyes open, but uh, there we go. Um, <clears throat> Yes, obviously, I'm in favour of, favour of this chair. I mean, we still do have options open to us. Um, I, for one, I'm not happy with any of the caravans on that site, and I think I made that clear at the at the last meeting that, and if there was no um, uh, movement on that, that uh, I would be, in fact, at that meeting, I would be voting against it. So, um, but I'm I'm pleased that the uh, both the applicant. Uh, the officers and the residents um, and Councillor Mrs Smith have, have all been together and um, sort of thrashed this out as, as best we can. Um, and certainly, um, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I live there, I'm very familiar with the site itself. Um, and, you know, what is on offer this evening does protect the residents a lot more than they had before. Um, what they had before was an uncontrolled uh, activities on the site almost. Um, they could have stored what they wanted, where they wanted, almost when they wanted. And that was a, the big risk of, um, <clears throat> of, of uh, not accepting this application. So, yeah, I'll be obviously voting for approval. and. Uh, I uh, think everybody's done a, done a good job with this one, Chair. Thank you. Right, OK, we've had a, a proposal and a seconder for approval. Do we have any other proposals? Sorry, Chair, can I just come in before you move to the vote? If you must. Sorry, I've just spoken to the applicant's agent. She's not been able to get hold of a client today because he's on holiday in respect of this additional condition. So. I was going to suggest that the authority is delegated to us to allow that discussion to take place to enable the extra condition to be imposed. I'm if, happy, if, if I'm, if I'm happy enough to delegate it as, as long as every, the rest of the committee are. Yeah. yeah. Right, OK, so um, with no other... Oh, Councillor Moon. Please don't say it like that. Oh, Councillor Moon. Um, well, it's 21-29. I appreciate that, Chair, but I do feel we should execute our duties appropriately and I'm sure you will concur. Um, I. I just want to ask about the delegation. Are we are we saying we're comfortable as a committee to go ahead as is, but we'll delegate that if you can get that additional condition, please do, but it goes anyway, or are we saying without that condition, we're not happy? I just feel that I, I want to know that, Chair, that is it a make or break condition or are we taking it as a added bonus if we can get it? My view would it be an added bonus, essentially. Um, I, I wouldn't like to bring it back for a refusal on the basis of not securing that condition. Councillor Mrs Green. Yeah, Chair. Um, I mean, I must concur with Councillor Smith. I'm not happy with any caravans on there, to be honest. And, um, you know, I have nothing against caravan sites. I used to have a caravan myself in years gone by. But it's not what's happening, it's where it's happening. It's white stake, for crying out loud. I, I just want to know if there are strict enough conditions on there to control these electric cars and games and stuff that they're planning to have on there. Nothing wrong with the petting zoo and, and literally caravans if they're just quietly on there. 
but the little cars and things uh, that can potentially be noisy are the conditions on there to control those for the residents' benefits. Chris? There are these vehicles electric or are they diesel? They are electric, yeah, all these vehicles are electric and there is a condition which, uh, there we go, it's condition number 24 and what that secures is that um, the recreational and leisure uses are restricted to the, to the specific activities um, detailed on the master plan. So uh, there are electric, if planning permission is granted, you can't just then start whacking petrol quad bikes on because it will be in breach of that condition. Sorry, come again. They're electric and we've got a condition that requires... So we have got a condition, they're electric, and if they tried to put a diesel one on, we could... Yeah, it, it would be in breach of that condition. Thank you. Coming back, so coming back, are electric ones quiet? Yes. That's they're, not like a, they're not like a go-kart or anything? No, they're like, they're like Teslas. Right. You can't, yeah. you can't hear a Tesla coming, that's why so many people get knocked down by them. Mm. But Councillor Smith. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy for, for that to, to go forward uh, on a voluntary basis. I think there's dialogue between the, the council, the applicant and the residents now and the councillors. So I think um, that, that dialogue will be uh, good going forward. There's also in some of the conditions a dialogue with the residents uh, in, in consultation with the residents. So if there's no agreement there, obviously we, we've then got to start uh, looking at other things, but that dialogue will be on, ongoing. Thank Thank you. Okay, so we've had a proposal and a seconder for approval. I am now going to go to the vote. Councillor Adams. Four. Councillor Donoghue. Four. Councillor Flannery. Four. Councillor Mary Green. Four. Councillor Harry Hancock. Four. Councillor John Hesketh. Councillor Chris Lomax. Four. Councillor Caroline Moon. Four. Councillor Phil Smith. Four. Councillor Gareth Watson. Four. Chair. Councillor Barry Yates. I am also in favour. Alex, can you confirm the outcome of the vote, please? Thank you, Chair. Members have voted unanimously to approve the application subject to conditions and to delegate, delegate power to officers to negotiate with the applicant a condition regarding the phasing of development. OK, thanks very much for that. If the members of the public would like to leave through these side doors here. Mm. Hey, we'll and we'll carry on. All right, item number 10 this evening. This one's been before us before as well. Uh, it's two acres, Preston New Road, Sonsbury. Um, Janice, would you like to um, please don't have an IT failure now? Looking at you. Thank you, Chair. This is the two acre site on Preston New Road in Salmsbury, which is operated by Roman Stone Cutter Stone, which is an established business supplying stone and tiles for international, uh, for internal and external use. <clears throat> so this is just a view of the site existing as um, a showroom building, a storage building, car park to the front. <clears throat> um, there's also storage here was allowed and the original permission some years ago um, the site is within the green belt, surrounded by field and hedgerow boundaries, and there's public rights away to the north of the site. <clears throat> so this application is a resubmission of a previously refused scheme and proposes the erection of a storage and workshop building to the rear of the existing storage building, together with um, external storage of timber products. So this is the new proposed building and that's the storage area. So this is just shows the elevations of the proposed buildings and the internal layout. So it's for a workshop and storage. It's a reduction in size from the previously refused scheme, which had two workshops. So it provides for the expansion of the business and a business and financial plan has been submitted with this application 
outlining the proposed ex proposed expansion. So this is reported in the committee report at, at 8.5. So this is a picture of the existing storage building on site. Uh, the proposed building will be of a similar design. The building will be used to store stone products, some of which are currently stored externally and also a workshop. So you can see some of the external storage there. <clears throat> and then this is between the, the existing um, showroom building and storage building. So you can see there's quite a lot. And this just shows the rear of the um, showroom building where you get some more storage. So to the rear of the site, timber products are also being stored. So it's considered this is a complementary use to the main use of the tile and stone business. For example, garden landscaping where fencing and decking complement tile patios. So although the Rural Development SPD discourages external storage, it must be re recognised that the original approved plans did identify external storage. Um, just finally, the Thirlmere Aqueduct runs through the site and United Utilities have requested a condition be imposed to ensure a risk assessment method statement submitted to ensure that any risk to the pipeline from construction activities are mitigated against. That's condition five. They also request some other conditions relating to drainage and an informative note. So it's considered on balance. This reduced scheme is acceptable in the green belt and the proposed expansion is backed up this time by a business and financial plan, which was absent from the previously refused scheme. And therefore, this application is recommended for approval, subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thanks for your presentation, Janice. Right, we've no members of the public wanting to speak in favour or objection. We don't have the applicant, we don't have the agent. Uh, opening it up to committee, Councillor Flannery, followed by Councillor Adams. Thanks, Chair. Um, well, there's been a couple of these tonight. It's good to see applicants have gone away, um, done a bit more work and come back with further information for our officers in terms of their requests. Uh, I, I, was, I always struggled with this one last time about being refused because what you've got is a business on an existing site and just wanted a bit of support in terms of its growth and, um, and its investment, particularly uh, at times like this when a lot of businesses are really struggling. So I want to propose approval, Chair, on the basis of the additional information which has been presented uh, and have responded accordingly to our officers' requests. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Flannery. Councillor Adams. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. For me, very straightforward. Um, I like all the comments of Councillor Flannery. Um, I did actually uh, approve of the previous application um, for the reasons that Councillor Flannery stated in terms of supporting businesses. Um, so fair play to the uh, applicant of coming back and listening to the concerns of other committee members um, and um, adapting uh, the application. So uh, very easy for me to approve, to second uh, approval. Uh, and would we'll thank the applicant for doing so. Thank you. Thanks for that, Councillor Adams. Councillor Smith. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I've been up there today and had a, a, a look round, uh, as I did the other sites, and um, at, uh, had a look at what uh, what was going on there. Uh, I'm happy to see the sort of reduction inside of the inside of the um, original unit that was proposed, because I think they were letting it out rather than running their own business from it. They were letting it out for other people to run their businesses from it. So I'm quite happy to see that um, <clears throat> what uh, what they're going going to do there. Um, their business plan that they put forward, two three pages of it, is uh, makes interesting reading. Uh, and it adds a lot to the report, I have to say. Um, it does add a lot to the report. Um, so on the basis of that, I will, I will be uh, supporting it. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks, Councillor Smith. Councillor Yates. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll be supporting this uh, application, but I was just wondering, now that we're putting the storage inside, uh, the bottom end of the, of the site is, uh, is, a, is a mess. And it's in the in the green belt. Could we get that site cleaned up as part of this application or not? It's just a question, Joe. Janice, would you like to reply? 
Are you meaning the storage of the timber products? Well, all the cars have gone, so there's, there's timber products there now, so that's part of this application for the storage of those. That, that's included in the application. Well. Okay, so we've had a proposal in a second. Do we have any other proposals on this application? No, okay, we'll go to the vote. Um, Councillor Adams. Four. Councillor Donoghue. Four, Chair. Councillor Flannery. Four. Councillor Mary Green. Four. Councillor Harry Hancock. Four. Councillor John Hesketh. Councillor Chris Lomax. Four. Councillor Caroline Moon. Four. Councillor Phil Smith. Four. Councillor Gareth Watson. Four, Chair. Councillor Barry Yates. I am also in favour. Alex, do you confirm the outcome of the vote? Thank you, Chair. Members have voted to approve the application for the construction of a commercial building subject to conditions. Thank you very much for that. OK, item number 11. I wish I had as many relations as you had, Councillor Hesketh. I'd be able to do an early dart and all. <laughs> Thanks for your attendance, Councillor Hesketh. All right. Number 11, Tower View Farm. Grange Lane, Hutton, where they're all called Hesker. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Last but not least, um, a piece of land, it's a 10 acre piece of land on the northern side of Grange Lane in Hutton. It's associated with Old Grange and Tower View dairy farms. To the east and west are deep tracks of open farmland. To the south are Tower View and Middle Grange farms, and Old Grange farm is, is southwest. There's a private track which runs along the, the western side and the site's bound on all sides by, uh, partially bound by a hedgerow. Otherwise, this, the area is flat and open. The wider area is primarily in farming use. It's secluded, very rural in nature, and it's in the green belt. The closest properties that aren't related to the application are around 120 metres away. The Ribble Estuary is a kilometre to the west, but the site's flood zone one, so it's least likely to flood. The application is for erection of new cubicle and milking parlour buildings, installation of a slurry lagoon and new access with hard standing and associated works. Old Grange and Tower View farms, which are opposite, our established dairy, sheep and arable farms are around 530 hectares in total, with 550 head of cattle. Existing buildings are a mix of old and new with an ageing parlour structure and movement between and use of the older buildings is labour intensive and time consuming. So the applicant feels it's sensible to provide one central facility that's large enough to account for its future business growth. There'd be improved productivity and it brings it in line with increasingly stringent animal welfare and milk production standards. We've got a letter of support from a, an established local uh, vet who's a specialist in this area. There are currently 10 employees. It's expected to rise to 14 if approved. So taking each bit in turn, the new access will be 27 metres from the eastern corner and it can accommodate large articulated vehicles with appropriate sight lines. It connects in site to a turning area and to concrete aprons around all the buildings. I was happy with, with the access and with the sight lines. The slurry lagoon, sounds lovely, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> it will be 210 metres from Grange Lane, so it's kept well away, and 130 metres from the proposed cubicle building to the north of the site. It's 100 metres by 400 metres in footprint, and it's got a floor level of five and a half metres deep. Um, it'd be lined with clay to prevent permeation into the adjacent ground. There's no doubt it's large, but Woodfold, Mercer's and Weaver's Farm, which straddle this site, have all had similar lagoons in the last five to ten years, and there's no issue whatsoever with them. There'll be rank, ramped access on the western side, and perimeter safety fencing, and there's enough slurry storage for six months. That's a legal requirement. So we're looking at 13,000 cubic meters of slurry, wash and surface water. Um, permeability and ground investigation testing have been undertaken and everybody's satisfied with them. 
The eastern boundary hedge will be re reinforced as recommended by the applicant's ecologist. The rotary milking parlour building will be the smaller of the two, but the one that's most visible from Grange Lane and it has a surrounding concrete apron. It's about 10 metres from Grange Lane. It's 72 metres by 27 metres with a, a roof height of 8 metres. Roof heights on agricultural buildings are always higher to accommodate farm, building, farm vehicles. The existing milking parlour at Old Grange is 182 square metres. This one's 1944, but there is no parlour at Tower View and it's needed for to combine the two farms. The cubicle building will be 20 metres north of the milking parlour. That's 120 metres by 25 metres with a canopy overhang on each side and a concrete apron. This one covers 3,000 square metres. Um, the existing ones at Tower View and Old Grange in 1957. The existing buildings on the other farms are going to be put to lighter use, so they won't be in the same intensive use. Both buildings will be a mix of concrete panels, Yorkshire boarding and fibreboard roofing with roof lights into the northern elevations. The land beyond will the concrete aprons remains as grass and surface waters drained via a new drain into a ditch north of the site. Foul water will be packed into the proposed slurry lagoon and it's emptied on a six monthly basis is spread. Um, okay. So this, that's the site on the right, viewed from Grange Lane. Um, I took the photograph from the access, that's a private access track on the left, and it's all of this field. And the proposed access onto Grange Lane, um, the two farms are on this side, and this is the site on the left, just over the hedge. We've had no letters of rep representation, no statutory objections, and it's an appropriate use in the green belt, so we would recommend approval with conditions. You do have an update sheet with a very slight rewording of the, one of the conditions to allow some internal work, but uh, it's, it doesn't change the basic remit of the condition. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thanks for your presentation, Debbie. Gripping stuff. Right, uh, I don't see any pitchforks in the room, so I presume we've no members of the public wanting to speak. So I'll come into committee. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it's good to see our local farming community investing in their farms and, uh, and, and what they do with providing us with uh, milk and food and agriculture. Um, it's good to see that happening. Um, so on the basis of that, it's a fairly straightforward report, Chair, and um, I will uh, propose approval. Thank you for that, Councillor Smith. Councillor Adams. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, just to um, agree with Councillor Smith, um, it's it's something that we should support, um, our local farm industry, um, and I'm very happy to do so, so I'm, I will second uh, approval. Thank you. Yeah. Any other proposals? <laughs> well, four more proposals. Right, so let's go to the vote then. Councillor Adams. Four. Uh, Councillor Donahue. Four, Chair. Councillor Flannery. Four. Councillor Mary Green. Four. Councillor Harry Hancock. Four, Chair. Councillor Chris Lomax. Four. Councillor Caroline Moon. Four. Councillor Phil Smith. For providing you don't, don't spread the slurry on a Friday on a Saturday and Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Councillor Gareth Watson. For it, Chair. Councillor Barry Yates. I'm also for it. Alex, can you confirm the outcome of the vote, please? Thank you, Chair. Members have voted unanimously to approve the application subject to conditions. Thanks for that, Alex. Right. Thanks very much. Officers, you've been delight as always. Uh, just just one quick thing before we go. I don't know whether you've all read your emails. There's an additional planning committee meeting in August on the 25th because we've got so many planning applications coming in. So I do apologise about that. We usually have a recess in August. And can I just congratulate our colleague Will Adams on graduate, graduating today with a BSc in nursing. Congratulations, Rick. That's Clap the NHS. I hope it was on YouTube. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone. It's been a long, hard meeting and I'm absolutely shattered.
Good night. Thanks very much indeed, everyone.